So we got Ayala ready to kick it off for Bedford. They're going to move from our right to left. Portsmouth's ready to take the ball. We're going to see their offense coming up there after the kick. Ayello <coughs> boots it away. Low by fielded, then dropped by the Bedford player deep. He's at the uh, five yard line up to the 10 and immediately gets brought down by a couple of tackles. So he misplayed that catch, Steve, and it cost him. We talked about special teams, Mike, before the game started. And, and, and the team that is the, the underdog has to perform and take each special team and step up to the plate. And uh, that was, a, was an error that's going to put them deep in, uh, in, in, in tough field position coming out of their own zone. So we got, uh, we're going to see the uh, uh, Portsmouth uh, spread offense here. <coughs> Again, we're looking for Graham, Connor, Adams, Russo, Kane. Those are the names we'll be talking about tonight. Uh, Portsmouth comes out. They spread one to the left, one to the right, couple tight ends, two in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap. Waiting. Ball is, oh, they're trying to get Bedford to jump. They yeah. don't. Gets a snap, comes this way, going to throw, throws down here, and it is in and out of the hands. And that was, you get the number there, Steve? Uh, number five, excellent defensive play. Lucian Mumpini. So Mumpini on a defensive play. Who was that for Portsmouth? Was that 86? 86. 84 Russo, maybe? Yeah, I think it was Russo. But, uh, so you know, uh, the, uh, not really a smart pass to be throwing in your end. I mean, uh, Mumpini was probably three yards away from him and has great recovery speed. Good coverage and showed from, that. from Lucian. Same setup. One to the right, one to the left, two in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap. Waiting for last time they wanted Bedford to jump. Comes back to Grand handoff in the middle and nowhere. They got gobbled up. Bedford gave them nothing. Nice oh. job there with the inside linebackers reading it. Uh, I believe that was uh, Dimitri Anagnos that uh, came in uh, and closed that right down. Had a nice read. Brown. Uh, one thing I noticed, Mike, <clears throat> the running game looks like it was very slow to develop. Yeah, Brown, Anagnos, Adams, Northfleet, Lagulon. You're to hear about those guys. Uh, Toscano and Mumpini's also back there. So... Got a, uh, we got Bedford ready in prime to stop them. It's third and 10, 11, 19 to go in the first quarter. Now we got two to the uh, right, one to the left, one in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap, looking over the field, takes the snap, drops back, comes this way, looking to pass, looking to pass, over the middle, tipped, and almost intercepted. Two Bedford kids had a shot at it. He threw into traffic, not smart. Yeah, just uh, so far, um, Bedford's uh, uh, coverage has been very tight. Uh, two, both passes were Aaron passes. Should have been, uh, actually should have tucked and run both of those. There was a situation right there. I thought he had the edge to turn the corner. And maybe gets a little positive yardage. Now he's punting about seven yards into his end zone. And it's got to be a good snap and a good release because Bedford's coming, but back there deep at the 40-yard uh, line, 42-yard line of Portsmouth is, uh, that's number five, that's Mumpini. <coughs> he was dangerous last week and he proved it. Sure was. So snaps back, fielded well, kicks away, end over end, coming to Mumpini, gets it at the 32, shifts back away, cuts up, over the 30 to the 25, far side to the 20, and knocked out of bounds. What a cut, man. what a run. Nice cut, but the real deal with this thing is the special teams, uh, 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 you know, bundle there, you know, blunder there. That, that put him in this position, and now you're looking at first and 10, I think, what, on the 19-yard line or 18-yard line? So 18, Por Steve, yeah. Yeah, Portsmouth's going to have to, to uh, start uh, straightening that element of their game out. They're going to be, this thing's going to be over quick. Well, Portsmouth three and out. Here comes Bedford. Let's see what they can do in their first drive. So we got an empty backfield. We have two to the left. We got two to the right. Robert, an empty backfield, waiting for the first snap. Usually they motion on a play like this. Let's see what happens. No, nope, straight back. Robert goes back to pass. Down this side. Wide open. Touchdown. Shabrick. Yeah, nice pass. Connor's comfort in the pocket and his growth. I mean, don't get me wrong. He was dynamite as a sophomore. Uh, improved as a junior. What I really like about him right now is, is his ability to, mul to read multiple. He checks people off. This kid's really developing into the next, the next level that recruiting college recruiters are looking for and the yeah. ability to look at multiple receivers. Well, I am ready for the point after he's going to put this thing up, but somebody better check off Shabrick because if he's open like that all day, Robert will hit him because nobody was around him. Yeah, and a nice route run, too. 18-yard TD. Kick is up. Aiello in. It is good. Listen, we talked about Joe Aiello last week. He hasn't missed one yet, a point after. This kid's got some leg there, too. Not yeah. only is he kicking it through the, through the goalpost, but is he putting it 15, 20 yards beyond that. So... He's, he's a threat all around. Love get, that kid. Give some credit to the snap, the snapper as well as the holder. I mean, uh, okay. uh, Aiello is, is, is doing it, but he's got a nice, a nice place to kick from every single time. The, the rhythm is there. 
It's all good. Hey, if those other two things don't happen, he's not getting the kickoff. Yeah, You're absolutely right. Yeah, so you become a run. It becomes a running game. The old trifecta: <laughs> snapper, holder, kicker. Yeah. So Portsmouth, Portsmouth has got to respond here. I mean, uh, uh, you can. Th th this 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 Bedford team can put you in a hole in a hurry, and if you give it to them, they're going to double speed. Yeah. So uh, they they really need to come up with something effective here. Get a good run back. At least change the field position in the game. So here we have um, Aiello ready to kick it off. Again, going from our right to left. Portsmouth ready to take the ball deep. They're set up about the five yard line. And Aiello's ready to go. 10.45 to go in the first quarter, seven nothing Bedford. Kick is up, it's high, <coughs> it's coming this way, a little short. Dropped it again at the 15 to the 20. Uh, spins up to the 25, got to about the 27. Hey, he dropped the ball. Bedford attempt to tackle him, missed him, and he got some positive yards. Steve. Well, but Bedford missed him where? They missed him outside contained. So if you're gonna if you're gonna go down there like lightning speed, you miss on an outside contain route, which forces the uh, the runner from getting outside with no defenders and points them back to the defenders, and that's why he only grabbed another three or four yards. Quick early score in volleyball. The Bedford girls are down in Nashua North, and they're down in the first set, 12-7. Well, they'll they'll come back. They'll come back. All right, Graham in the backfield with one, two to the right, one in motion. Hands off to the motion guy, going far side, and he gets nowhere. I mean, if you're going to try to run sideways against this defense, it's just not going to happen. That was Jacob, uh, number Jacob one, Putin. Yeah, number one, you're not going to be able to control the edge. They're getting beat in the edge on both sides, at least in the last uh, in, in the plays that I've seen. And So you, you really got to try to create some misdirection and go after these guys that way. When the defensive linemen are in the backfield, you know that the you don't run You don't run east-west. I mean, yeah. yeah, I mean, you'd run north-south. But you've got to have some you know, some misdirection to get Anagnost focusing on uh, on the movement, and they might open a hole. All right, so Graham's one in the backfield with Graham, two to the left, two to the right, ready for the snap. Man in motion, fakes the motion. Graham looks to throw. He's got nowhere to go. He's scrambling this way. He's got a guy downfield, plenty of time, and he just throws it out of bounds. That was so smart. Coverage, yeah. That's what he's got to do. Kick the ball away. They're out at the 20-some-odd yard line. Uh, they should have been out at the 30 uh, if they were running north-south. I mean, the, the point I'm making is if you can't, if the offense isn't working yet, at least you want to start winning the field position game and force Bedford to get multiple first downs. So Portsmouth on their own 23 with 9.48 to go. Um, Trout going from our left to right, and they're, uh, boy, they're third and 15 now, so mm. this is a big play for them. They don't get uh, 15 yards. Bedford gets the ball back, and, and they're clicking at this point. So Ports Graham brings him out. He's got one in the backfield, two to the left, two to the right. <coughs> Waiting for the snap, looking over the Bedford defense. Man in motion comes this way for Portsmouth. Fakes the man down the middle, goes down he has the field. Him. He has open him. and he overthrew yeah. him. Well, so. I mean, the mechanics of the quarterback there is the reason why it went out of bounds. He had in, in, instead of uh, instead of backing up, dipping his back shoulder. He's got to stand up high and he's got to he's got to fire the ball. Yeah, that was going to Kevin Russo who had a step on his guy and he just overthrew him. So they're gonna they're gonna have to punt it away. I, I'm assuming that Owen Brown's number 42 is correct. Um, I didn't have Owen as a starter. He must have had a pretty good week in practice to be out there at uh, it it uh, at linebacker. So and all three linebackers doing a great job. <coughs> Fabulous job. Okay, Portsmouth ready to kick. Snap back. Kick is away. It's a high, deep kick. Mumpini is staying away from it. And Portsmouth's going to get a Portsmouth roll down to the Bedford 46, 46, 47, yard line, 47, 47 yep. yard line where, where, uh, where Bedford will take over. Well, there's Owen. two things you can do as punting to stop a guy like Mumpini. You do not want Mumpini to get the ball. It's just going to be, it's going to be, uh, uh, it's all going to end up bad for Portsmouth if they give yep. him the ball. So there's two ways of doing it. You can pound it downside a line drive and tend to get a bounding ball. You can put it up high with a lot of hang time, lead the defenders to get down there. And that's what they did. So at least they're on their own. In bed, they forced bed from their own territory. Two to the right, two to the left. One bat, one person in the backfield with Robert. Robert hands off to looks like Anagnos right up the middle. Positive ten yards, twelve yards. You can't take him down. Still going, fifteen yards. There's a host of Bedford, Portsmouth guys trying to take him down, you know, and you, they finally you, you do. You could see this developing with Anagnos last year, if you remember. It was a couple games there towards the end of the year. He was getting a lot of carries. Really liked the way he controls the ball and his relentless attitude about getting the ball down the field. He, 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 he runs with the idea, I'm going to punish you. Yeah, Anagnos in the backfield once again. Same play. Why not run it again? This time 10 yards, 15 yards. Again, 
to the right, had four or five guys trying to bring him down. Finally, 12 yards later, they get him. And for a big guy, a nice cut there to the outside. Read his block, saw the seal, uh, went up. He, uh, what I like about the way Dimitri runs is he's north-south, and he goes right through the hole 100 miles an hour. Uh, two to the left, one to the right. Single pass for that's Norfleet. Norfleet gets it right up the middle. Once again, cuts this way. He's got Pater. Touchdown. Yeah. So they brought in a different running back. <laughs> Same results. So let's not, let's not forget about the blocking up front. They're completely dominating the defensive line of Portsmouth. The tackles are, getting, are, are not even being double teamed, and they're, and they're, they're in their linebacker's face. Anytime your defensive linemen are in the linebacker's face and vision, bad things are going to happen for your defense. Aiello coming in to uh, attempt his second PAT point after. 9.01 to go. Kick is up, and it is good. And plenty of room to boot. So 9.01 to go. Bedford 14, Portsmouth nothing. If we're going to play this field position game, this is going to be over at halftime. Uh, there's no way that Portsmouth can win this game have them starting out every time on uh, right on their, the 50-yard line or in, on their own 30 with Bedford taking it from first and 10. It's not going to happen. We're going to need another person to interview in the fourth quarter if, this, if the JVs are in there blowing them out. Well, Corey seemed to really enjoy that interview last week, so I'm sure as, as a backup, he'd be willing to come in a second week in a row. And you did a great job on that one. You know, why don't we have Bill Jennings come in and talk about all this new technology that BCTV is running with? It's fabulous. I hope you can see the score on the screen. I can see it here. Isn't that great? And uh, all, all upgrades. Great, yeah. great, great. Just job. terrific yeah. job, guys, on the on the on the viewing here. And this doesn't happen without a lot of hard work by the BCTV crew. They put a lot of effort in the off season to make you make your experience here an enriched experience. And, and some of my Comcast fees. <laughs> <laughs> well, compared to some of the garbage that's on television, I don't mind a little more money going to that. I think this is a good, clean family show. I absolutely agree. Uh, yellow back, ready to kick it away. 9-on-1 to go. Bedford with a two-touchdown lead over Portsmouth, and Portsmouth has not been able to uh, get through this Bedford defense. Little, little short kick fielded by Portsmouth at the 40. Breaks up to about the 43, 44 yard line. In, unless Coach Stank is practicing that, I wouldn't. I mean, why give him? Uh, I mean, they can't get to the 20 yard line uh, on, on a clean kick. I'm a little confused. Probably in this situation, the 14 0 lead, uh, he's trying to give his kicker an opportunity to get some live experience making some different variations. Beautiful. Beautiful. Like that. All right. So again, Portsmouth comes out. They're on their own 33 yard line going from our left to right. You've got uh, one to the left, two to the right, one in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting, hands off, second back through and nowhere. That's for a loss. Flag comes out. Yeah. That's got to be. What do you think of that flag? That's got to be holding on Portsmouth. Uh, I, I would I would assume so, but I mean I don't know who's blocking up front there. They're just being dominated by the defense. Yeah, two guys in the backfield. Let's see what uh, let's see what we got. We got a flag. What do you see there, Steve? Uh, I I got a face mask. Yeah, on face Bedford. mask yeah. on Bedford. I, you know what happened? I think the, the, he face masked the blocker. I saw his hands up underneath, and what he did to shed the blocker, he, instead of, uh, of of doing a swim move, he did a uh, grab the cage and pull him out of the way move. I think the Portsmouth kid might have been turning his head, and his hand got in the way. That's all. I mean, I mean, come well, on. that's one way of looking at it. It's Absolutely, possible. that's a hometown call that's right there. I would agree with that. That's a possibility. Yeah, eight fifty two left in the first quarter here. 14 to zip, Bedford. 14 zip, Bedford. You got it. Portsmouth uh, just got a, uh, I think that was a five-yard penalty, and they give them an automatic first out on it. Yeah, but I think that was from the spot of the foul. That's why it's only four yards up. It was a yard behind the line. All right, so Portsmouth comes out. They got two to the right, two in the backfield with Graham. Tight end. Ready for the call. Snap back, Graham straight back, look at the pass, comes this way, being pressured, being pressured, and Bedford can't get to him, he's scrambling, this kid can run, and he's got a kid wide open, and he hits him, a, they drop coverage to the 40, 35, 30, still on his feet, and then gets down to about the 31-yard line of Bedford, In who's that, is that Graham? That's one of the linemen, I believe, I don't think it's Graham, I don't believe it is. If it is, that's not good. I don't believe so. No. But I got to tell you, you got to give Graham a lot of credit on that scrambling right there, and then to have the have the ability to look downfield and see that, that's big. Yeah, we got a Bedford player down. There is a timeout. Actually, it's a Portsmouth player down. Excuse me, a Portsmouth yeah. player down. I'm sorry, there is a Portsmouth player down. Let me see if I can see down. who Thank it is you. for you, Mike. I would see either 11 or 21. I can't, I thought, I saw one in the back. I can't see what's... Oh, it's 11. It is number 11, so who do we got for Is that Graham? 11? 
No, 11 is uh, Jacob Booten. B -O -U -T -I -N. Jacob Booten. Okay. Jacob's a... Uh, no, it's not 11. We got 11 right over there. It's a different number. 21, sorry. 21. Owen Kane. Owen Kane, wide receiver yeah, he, cornerback. He tried to get up, but... Lo uh, lower leg. After three tries, he couldn't do it. Yeah. No, that's... Too bad. Too bad. But we have uh, both trainers out there attending to him, and uh, they'll give him the best care they can get, and hopefully he'll get on his feet and get back in the game. But so let's get... All right, so we got, uh, what was that, 21 we yeah. said, right? Yeah, he is putting weight on it, so that's... that's oh, what is it? 71. 71, I'm sorry, we gave you the wrong name. I guess Harrison Flagg, 71 well, coming off the field? The, the top part of that 7 isn't very seven. wide. That's yeah. why I thought it was 11. And they cleaned yeah. the windows, so it's no excuse. <laughs> so we, BCTV uh, doing some custodial yeah. work here at yeah. BHS. I'm and telling anyways, you, they'll do it all. That was Harrison Harrison Flag yeah. that came off for Portsmouth, and he's uh, he's off under his own power, so that's good. If you give Bill a good place to run a camera from, he's going to participate and do his part. There's no question about that. Only the best for you, Steve. Yeah. All right, so Portsmouth on a first and ten now on the Bedford 27-yard line going from our left to right. We got one to the right, excuse me, two to the right, two in the backfield with Graham. Graham ready to take the direct snap. Back, goes back to pass, looks this way, does a pump fake, now scrambles far side, another pump fake, there's a flag out, and he's tackled with a two-yard game. I think we got holding on number 57 from Portsmouth, uh, grabbing on to Josh Colmer, and uh, had him with two hands, it looked like. I'm assuming that's the call. Okay. Yep. Let's see, Steve Beals with a great call high above the field at 745. Well, you clean the glass, anything can happen. <laughs> anything can happen. And your binoculars, man. Yeah, and I got binoculars, too. Mr. Jennings gave me uh, binoculars. Uh, I, heard, I heard he stole them out of Harry's car. I'm not sure, that's but that's great. the last I heard. Oh, no, Harry's got his, too. Oh, uh, yeah, it did work. All right, so um, looks like Portsmouth, they're just uh, putting the penalty in play and pushing them back. They're going to be on the 39-yard line. Is that right? Yep. I think it is, First yeah. 10. Of Bedford. Yeah, Bedford's 39. Bedford. Bedford's 39. I might even try these things. Noah and uh, Chabrick and uh, Connor still uh, playing pass and, pass and catch here in the sideline. I'd like to have a nickel for every time over the last six months they so played pass and Graham catch. with two in the backfield, direct snap, holds it, far side, looking to pass on the pressure, and he's going down. Got to throw it out of bounds. High school quarterback, you got to train him. Unless he's scrambling for free, if he's in that pocket for more than second, more than four seconds, you yeah. either got to leave it or you, you got to you got to uh, throw it out of bounds. Falvey on the sack. Nice job. All right, so second down and 23 on the 47. <clears throat> you know, Bill, I mean, Mike, it's interesting uh, to see all the new variations of uh, play calling, whether it be pictures, whether it be hand signals. Um, uh, there's, there's some guys out there that actually, whoop, back, right. to the, back to action here. One in the backfield, two to the left, two to the right. Graham waiting the snap. Graham back, pass all the way, pressure, and gets gets through the Bedford line, and then gets tackled by a, yep. Norfleet's in there, and 53 uh, is in there too. So one of the Adams. things, one of the things that uh, uh, Portsmouth's got to start doing, the coach has got to stop telling these guys to run outside. What they have to do is actually start outside and cut up the middle. Uh, his defense is very, uh, Stank's defense is extremely disciplined to contain from the outside. You're going to get more yardage running, you know, north south then you are trying to beat them outside because it's not going to happen. So we got third down and 30 from the uh, Bedford 47. So since I got that first down, they've been gone backwards on three consecutive plays. So Graham in the backfield, single back. We got two to the left, two to the right. They're checking the play at the line, and we got a flag. Took too much time. Yep. Looks like they were having some trouble getting the signal in. I, I, don't, think, I don't think that Kramer was, uh, was getting it. And uh, I think what happened was uh, probably should have, at this late uh, juncture, within the first quarter, probably should have called a timeout there. Yeah, absolutely right. You got three of them. 
And you can't take them into the locker room with you. We always like saying that. Use yeah. them. That's and, what they're and, for. And also, Bedford, I mean, uh, Portsmouth can't afford to, to lose the ball. Uh, use a timeout there. Would have been the wise move, I think. So now after a couple penalties now, they're actually back in their own territory on the 48-yard line, going from our left to right. Graham single back in the backfield, two to the left, two to the right. Bedford's up, it's third and 36, 6.30 to go. Graham straight back trying to pass, comes up, fires downfield, and it is complete. Nice catch. That's number 81, 81 or 87, and a host of Bedford guys bring them down. Still not enough for a first on, but we'll yeah, see. Yeah, but that was a defensive uh, breakdown right there. You can't, uh, he's going for the interception. And uh, the, yeah. the the fact is, he I uh, give boy Kramer's got a strong arm Hunt, to Hunter Adams too. To Hunter Adams, yeah. 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 Graham, but uh, Graham, excuse yeah, me, Cody Kramer. Graham. Yeah, Cody uh, Graham. Yeah, Cody Graham has a very very strong arm right there. You yeah. can see it. But so they're going for it, Steve. We're not yep. surprised at that. Two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Cody Graham. Waiting for the snap. 5:51 on the 24 yard line of Bedford. Snap comes back. Graham goes right back, scrambles far side, fires into the end zone, and that is intercepted. Caught. Yes. No, oh, caught. no. He, wait a minute. He, he came it. down with the ball. He caught it. That was a great play. Wow, the Portsmouth kid went up with the Bedford kid, and this came down with the and he came down with the ball. I thought in Bedford intercepted. This kid comes down with the ball. It was a great play. Great catch. First and goal for Not a bad pass either. And a great pass. So on the two-yard line here. So single back in the backfield with Graham. Two to the left, two to the right. Motion. Fake to the motion. First back through, and that's going to be in the touchdown. That's, that's a, I don't that's see any a, flags yeah, either. No flag. Touchdown, I mean, Portsmouth. That's, that's exactly the breath of life from Portsmouth wow. standpoint they needed. Uh, they moved the ball. Uh, I give that to the quarterback right there. That was well earned by the quarterback. And a team that was fourth down and about 50 to go. Yep. Yep. And they two plays they got down there, including a spectacular catch that took it away from the Bedford defender, who we thought had intercepted. But D don't stop believing. The big breakdown there was the Bedford uh, defensive back going for the interception there uh, on the previous uh, on the first pass uh, instead of uh, looking to contain the runner because that cost him about nine yards. Portsmouth PAT up no good. and it is no good. Big point there. So big point they miss. So with 5:25 to go in the first quarter, Portsmouth comes back with a very unlikely touchdown after being fourth down, third down and about 30 or 40 yards, but they come down and put it in the end zone. 14-6 Bedford, 5:25 to go in the first quarter. Yeah, that's a that's a didn't expect that two minutes ago. Uh, that gives Portsmouth life, gives them a little bit of confidence. Right, it's going to make the guys in the trenches work a little harder because they have something to work for. So. You know, at the end of the day, you want a good competitive game, but I still think Bedford's in pretty good control here. But they are making some mistakes uh, on the uh, pass coverage uh, that uh, that they need to correct. All right, so an update on that volleyball score where they were down. Bedford Volleyball Girls come back to win a 25-23 first game uh, down at Nashua North. So Persistence. Good, good for the uh, girls from Bedford Volleyball who uh, suffered a loss last week against Dover, and they're trying to get on the W this week, and uh, it's a good way to get off with their first set, 25-23. A sport that really took off in the last uh, couple of Olympics and is really working its way down to the interest level at the high school level for the ladies. No question. Great sport. And, take, and, and uh, with the uh, Bedford teamwork. volleyball, we got Lady Bulldogs volleyball, the youth program in town, so if you want to play volleyball, let's sign up. Do not understand. All right. Bedford Why would you kick right to up, him? I don't, up I don't get it. Connor Crowley cuts it to the right. He's at the 50. Portsmouth trying to bring him down to the 40, down to about the 36-yard line. That was Connor Crowley with I, that. I, I mean, I, I don't <laughs> understand it. It's just a Great free run. gift. Why do you kick it on a line shot right to their primary receiver in a, in, a, uh, in a special team situation after you just scored a touchdown? The last thing you want to do is give them a big play to change momentum, and that's exactly what Portsmouth did by making that decision. Looks like we got uh, North Fleet out to the right, uh, two to the right, three to the left, three to the left. Empty backfield with Robert. Robert waiting for the direct snap. Goes back, looks, looks, takes the ball, tucks it and runs. This is where he does bet 40, 25, 20, 15, 10. He's going in. That's a touchdown. What a great play. Quarter obviously a, a quarterback draw play all the way. Yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think anyone would argue that he's the best running quarterback in the league. The problem is, right now, he's probably the best passer as well. Huh. This kid's uh, developing into a uh, in an outstanding, uh, you know, outstanding quarterback. And this is really, at this point, 
about how tall is Connor get. And it's really all the mechanics, all the skills, all of the attitude, all the mind game. This kid's got it all as good as any quarterback you're going to find. If this kid gets up around 6'2", six, 6'3", six, which I think right now he's, what, 6, right? Yeah. Mumpini with the point after, and, and just so we can give credit to the holder, that was... Uh, Apologize, that was Connor's grown since last year. It says he's 6'2". So this kid's already in the range of some uh, big-time opportunities. And, uh, you know, he... It, 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 when you, the quick release this kid's got is, in, when you look, everything everybody's running the spread offense, one thing you want to do is be a good decision maker, be able to adjust on the fly, which he clearly can do. He can run the ball, and he can pass with precision, but most of all, he gets rid of the ball quickly. He doesn't give DBs the opportunity to close that three-yard gap, and that's why he's so successful. Makes and everybody else around him better. And how deflating is that after Portsmouth went down and stuck in the end zone? I, and on I, one play, I, yeah, I just don't have plays. a lot. I don't have a lot of sympathy when you kick a line drive that right was, to their primary. That was the first play mistake. Yeah, well, I mean, but I mean, you set you up for you set yourself up for that with a momentum change. That's what you never want to give a team that you know is superior to you. Yeah. Don't give them momentum when you've just taken it back. IL ready to kick this thing off again, going from our right to left. Bedford with 5.08 to go, up 21-6 to six over Portsmouth. Aiello's kick is Squibbler down, handled by Bedford, <laughs> uh, by Portsmouth. Portsmouth coming oh, up, immediately <laughs> dropped Dimitri Anagnos comes up big, square to the line, <laughs> and that guy didn't know what hit him. Yeah. No, never any question that Dimitri said to himself, make it me, man. If make it me. If there's, if there's a highlight film we want to put together with Dimitri, that's one of the this plays is, I want to This is another together. emerging football player that's been there all along but starting to play at a very high level. He could see at the end of last year. And what you look for is a rising junior yeah. that pushes that into attitude, work ethic into the senior year. And that's what you're seeing with Dimitri right now. And they got him on special team, so he's a special kid. Here we go. Portsmouth. Yeah, he's uh, obviously doesn't care what he does. Just put me on the field, coach. Just put me on the field. I want to play. All right, so here we go. So Graham, two in the backfield with Graham. We got uh, one to the right, one to the left in a, uh, excuse me, two to the left, one to the right. Come in motion this way. Graham, hands off, second back through it, immediately brought down. Not yeah. even close. And yeah, Graham's looking for a face mask call, but that's not coming out. They aren't getting that. I don't want to overplay this card, Mike, but you can't be a team that's the underdog and allow momentum to change because yeah. what you did is just gave and, it right back to on. Bedford. And who made the tackle? Anagnos. Anagnos. He's on fire tonight at, at middle linebacker. It's great. Good, good, good play so far. Another, so another thing I'm watching with Dimitri is oh, we'll wait till the play's over. So we got uh, one to the left. We have two to the right, three to the right. One in the backfield with with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap. Snap comes back, comes this way, looking to pass, looking to pass. Got plenty of time. Fires near side and incomplete because Mumpini came up and gave him a shot while the kid was, was bobbling the ball. Mumpini gives him a shot. Ball comes out incomplete. Nice play. Yeah, I had Owen Kane wide open there in the middle. Uh, I, I think when if, if you watch uh, Graham when he's, when he's uh, rolling out, he's rolling out too far. Uh, he's, he rolls out. He finds space. Yeah. He's got a, uh, he builds himself a new pocket, and then what does he do? He doesn't set himself. He keeps on running. Well, if you're going to keep doing that, eventually you've got to tuck it and run, and he's not doing that. So he's taking himself out of, out of a good vision, uh, a situation where he's got good vision. Two to the left, two to the right, one in the backfield with Graham. Waiting for the direct snap. Comes back. Graham goes right back to pass. Got pressured. He's still on the pressure. Fires this way, and it is incomplete again. Mumpini coming up, making a great defensive stop. That was so close. If you call a flag, you couldn't complain. If you didn't call a flag, that was bang, bang right there. Good job by Mumpini right over him. Mumpini's recovery speed is impressive at, uh, at cornerback. So, familiar tone. 4.13 to go. Yeah, let's, let's ready to kick it off let, again. Let's see if they kick it right to Mumpini again. Uh, if they do it, you, you, at some point, you just got to... You know, somebody's got to send him a text message or something. Yeah, Mumpini is deep for Bedford. Ports is ready to kick it off. Kick Ports it over in the corner. Get it past the 40. I mean, if Mumpini gets it, he's going to get it down to your 20. Snap is back. Kick is up and away, and it's coming Much right better. to Mumpini. The axe is not going to Mumpini. It's a little short, and it takes a... Yeah. Takes a Portsmouth throw, and they down it right at midfield. Bedford's going to take it over with 4.03 to go in the first quarter. Bedford leading 21-6. to six. What does the guy in the hotel commercial said? Yeah, like I said. There. <laughs> 
hey, we want to welcome everybody from around the country, around the world. Uh, we're on BCTV 105 Radio. We're doing a uh, stream. The World Wide Web is here. And, and uh, the people in the armed services who might be listening, God love you, God speed, and, and thanks for doing what you do. 4.03 to go in the first quarter. We got some. We got some people there. Chris is going to tell us where they are. Okay, here we go. Robert back straight back fires, and that's incomplete. And that was to number six uh, for Bedford. Yeah, that's is, uh, Tom Morgan. So, Tom yeah, Morgan's I'm not junior. sure that Tom wasn't supposed to turn outside there. I believe that he turned inside when he should have turned out. I could be wrong, but it certainly looked like that. So three to the left, one to the right. Single backfield with Robert. Robert waiting for the snap. Fakes it, now hands it to Norfleet coming this way, gets to the 50, breaks another tackle, gets to the 46-yard line of Portsmouth. They're in Portsmouth territory, Bedford 350. They're in Portsmouth yards. territory, but the tackling of uh, 14, I mean, this guy's a defensive uh, backfield. He's got to square up and tackle better than that. Yeah. Uh, Third down and five. Here we go. Uh, Bedford uh, hands off. Oh, Robert with the fake goes right up the middle once again positive yard unbelievable 30 25 20 right to the house that's another touchdown and I don't see any flags that was a great play that was it that was a fake handoff and Robert just read the tackles linebackers they went left he went right touchdown this kid's this kid is a, not even the same player as he was last year and that was good enough to win a championship Boy, I'll tell you, he's got some uh, big plays. The only thing we got to watch is the point. Let him get his runs out, Coach, but you don't want to put him in a situation where uh, you, 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 he gets injured. So it's, it's that balance. But, I mean, you know, in all fairness, you got to let Connor run the ball. Let him do his thing. Have some fun. But I yell ready to add another point after the ball gets up, and that one's good. So This guy splits the uprights every single time. Hey, let's talk about the difference a game makes. In the first quarter last week against Memorial, we didn't have any points. In the first quarter against a supposedly better team, Portsmouth, we've put up 28 points so far, Steve. Well, football's about getting better every week. It's not one of those games. It's not one of those... Uh, one of those uh, sports that you've got you know 30 games to to lose 10 you you got to get better every single week if you can do that and uh, avoid injuries uh bedford's on that that's the key they're deep uh but i mean connor roberts is leading this offense and right now dimitri anagnos is starting to uh work his way into a leadership position if he's not already there by he's just there. leading by example this guy is really getting it done on the field so hey I two, gotta, gotta, two great great players got another update from the volleyball down in nashua north bedford in their second game they they played best out of five it's 10 10 in the second game those games wow. go to 25 win by two so uh the girls Look like they're doing a lot better than they did over in Dover, and so we're rooting them on here as well. 3.32 to go. Here we go. Aiello kicks it away. This one is a little short this side, and that ball's free, and luckily the Portsmouth kid got his hands on it, but it went out of bounds after he touched it. So Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it's going to be interesting to see what Portsmouth uh, does here. Um, it looks to me like... As crazy as it sounds, some of the longer passes uh, are what's the, what's getting the yardage. Um, I I would I wouldn't if I was Portsmouth I wouldn't give up going off tackle, but not going on sweeps east to west. Start getting some of their runners to attack the line and maybe see what they can get. But they are losing the battle line of scrimmage. But so going so going from left to right on the Portsmouth 24 yard line. Portsmouth comes out two to the right, two to the left, one in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap. Man in motion this way, hand off to the motion guy, and he's immediately brought down. That was 81. a great, great, great play on Bedford defense. And Christian Borges. Bo Bourgeois. 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 Nice job, Mr. Bourgeois. Great tackle. Three great job. Uh, Maintain well, excellent outside outside containment, so and he ran right into it. This east-west running is not gonna is not gonna cut it. And Coach Stank loves it when defensive ends make huge plays because he was a defensive end up at UNH. Guess what he and loves he even more school. than making great plays. Contain the run. Don't let him get outside. Beautiful. That's what Coach Stank is all about. You look at the you look at this, the uh, the downfield steps that these guys take. They, you, you can tell the head coach was a D-end. To your point, Mike. Good point. Two to the right, one to the left. One in the backfield with a slot guy for Portsmouth. Graham waiting to take the snap. Man in motion. And they got a flag. Somebody jumped or too much time. What do we got? Too much time. Play a game. 
Starting to work some, Bedford's starting to work some blitz packages, uh, kind of trying to hide him a little stealth inside the line in some of the uh, various techniques, and uh, they're, they're slipping by the offensive line. The offensive linemen right now uh, for Portsmouth look befuddled, to say the least, Mike. And there's they're no, very confused. There's no excuse for a delay of game unless Portsmouth they can't read the Bedford defense and he's yeah. trying to figure it out. That's, but that's one thing, but I don't think happens. that happened there. We're going to go one to the left. We're going to go three to the right. Excuse me, two to the right. Slot guy, man in the backfield with Graham. Again, man in motion. Fake to the motion. Graham back the pass over the middle. Little screen. It went short. No, incomplete. And Ignace was right there anyway. Uh, really liked the way the linebackers for Bedford this week are shedding blockers. Doing a great job staying square to the line. Good handwork. Uh, working themselves off and in position to uh, take on any oncoming run. Third, Very effective. Third and 22 on the Portsmouth 13 yard line with 2.16 to go in the first quarter. And they need a bunch to keep this thing going. They did it last uh, series, so let's see if they got something up their sleeve. So we got two in the backfield with Graham, one to the right, one to the left. Dallas Slot guy this side. Hi, Snap Dallas. back, coming back. Looking, he's looking, looking, fires downfield, he gets hit. That's going to be intercepted. And that's going to be yeah. intercepted by Bedford, coming back Flag the other down. way. That looks like Glennon. Glennon with the interception, cuts back, still on his feet. And gets down by the 10 on another flag. So there's two flags in this play. Let's see what happens on this one, Steve. First one was deep. You think they got him for a uh, I don't know if they got uh, Bedford for uh, interference or not. But, uh, you know, with a score or, like 28 to 6, you, who knows? Or the Portsmouth guy. Offensive interference. Let's see what the let's see I have the no is. idea. Unless it was a push-off by the Portsmouth guy. But, yeah. but the guy that was free caught the ball five, six yards away. So I'm not sure how they can make that call. Yeah, there was two defenders back there. They might have got one of the guy holding be. and then uh, and held. So who, I mean, who knows? We're going to see that the guys down in the field, the officials down in the field today are going to gonna make that call. For those listening on radio who can't see, it, uh, we have uh, Portsmouth, uh, I mean, Bedford on the uh, currently on the 12, 13 yard line. Uh, of Portsmouth, and we're waiting for some uh, flag hey, calls here to see where this ball winds up. While these guys are talking, I met one of the uh, chain gains today, and I wanted to give a shout-out to the chain game. We never talk about the chain game, but they're doing a great job going, moving those chains up and down the field. we got uh, Doug Adams, Larry Lacombe, Dennis Looney, and uh, Ron Pernod. So shout-out to our chain game guys tonight. I'm not sure. I think Dennis Looney's been doing this for about 60 years or something like that. He was the guy I met at the dump. So I said, hey, I'm going to say something about you guys tonight. You do, no one ever talks about you. We're going to say hi. It's it's just great when you have guys, Steve Kelleher doing the announcing, Kenny. Uh, Ronnie Pernard hasn't missed a game. Ronnie Pernard is, a is fact. not. Wow. Not one game. Yeah, in that's ten, terrific. Ten, his 11th season, right? We're in the 11th season. Has great volunteer Pernod. crew. Nice. Long after their own kids have graduated, stay here. Um, just great to see. Dennis Looney, Steve Kelleher. Did we get the call down there, guys? What was it? Do we know? I think they're still... So, uh, so off and, uh, they look offsetting like they're offsetting. penalties, and Portsmouth's going to have to kick it away. Yep. So this game is uh, just continues to wind up. Special teams for the two weeks in a row, Mike. Special teams is giving Bedford a huge uh, field position advantage uh, almost every play. They're winning every special teams battle they're in. 16-16, girls volleyball tied yeah. up down at uh, Nashua North. So that's a tight game in their second game. Bill just mentioned to me, tough to believe it's the first quarter, but when you play a spread game with a lot of penalties and a lot of uh, touchdown, a lot of scoring, you get a yeah. lot of time out. So uh, as a result, we're still sitting here with two minutes left. So here we go. So Bedford is taking over the ball. It's going to be on the uh, Portsmouth 26 yard line going from our left to right. Uh, looks like, uh, who was that? Toscano in the backfield with Robert. Got th th two to the right, one to the left. Ready for the direct snap. Snap comes back. Robert goes straight back. Fires downfield. Nets intercepted. Picked off. Stepped right in front of him. Coming this way. Gets out to about the 25, 30. And then brought down at the 32-yard line. Stepped right in front of that pass and picked it off. It's a big play. It allows Portsmouth to try to keep, you know, stay in this game. But they have to, they have to uh, cash in here on offense and come out with a good, solid, sustained drive, Mike. Very, very unusual to see Connor Robin throw an interception. It's his first one this year. And i got to remember, last year, there, there might have been less than a handful that he threw. I, I don't remember a lot. Yeah. But, I mean, one of the things that happens, you get ahead like this, you're going to start working a little bit into your playbook. Uh, try to extend the field just a little bit, and uh, 
So here we go. Portsmouth comes out. They go one to the left, two to the right, one in the backfield with Graham. Going from our left to right. Graham waiting for the snap. Snap, it comes back, hands off, first guy through, gets no way. Ball's free, and that's it. We got it. We just picked it up. Bedford just, and that's uh, that's 22. That's um, just takes too Northley. long. Tom Northley Take picked that up. Bedford swarming, no argument, but on the other side of it, Portsmouth is not getting to the line quick enough. That took for, that exchange took forever. I mean, and to be perfectly we, honest with you, I hate to hurt anybody's feelings, but that looks like something out of a youth league uh, a handoff right there. That was just really poor. you got to get to the line. The way you beat a team like Bedford is get there north-south quickly, and they're just Portsmouth's breaking down and on right. everything here. Looks like Toscano's in the backfield with Robert. We got uh, two to the right, two to the left. Robert right back, fakes to Toscano over the middle, and that one was almost picked off. That was going to Shabrick, and that one ended out of his hands, and the Portsmouth guy dropped. It could have been a back Yeah, to back. Connor kind of sat back on that release, which opened up a little more air time, which allowed that to happen. Uh, he has not been doing that. He's, uh, you know... It's all part of the, of the process, but uh, kind of tighten that up. Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Man in motion. This is Mumpini. Hands off to Mumpini, and he goes right, and he's got a big hole. He's cutting back. Nice gain down to about the 20... One yard line of Portsmouth. He's with dangerous. 133 to dangerous go. every time he has the ball. Reminds me of Sean Rook Hussein. Uh, he had the, each of them have their own, uh, you know, habits and, and, and abilities, but they're. They're both similar when they get the ball. Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Two to the right, two to the left, waiting for the snap. Direct snap to Robert, and there's a f uh, flag coming out. Looks like we got some. Is that motion on Bedford? I think so. Bedford coming out a little flat on this offensive yeah. uh, run here. They uh, hard to keep the tempo up in his first quarter, and it's 28 to 6. We're, we're, uh, we're seeing some different flags from Bedford. Last yeah. week there was a lot of personal fouls. You know, the guys in the trenches were kind of pushing on each other. This one here is a motion one. That that is kind of unusual coming from this. Program. It is, but I think the tempo has something to do with this game. All right, so Anagnos still in the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Robert waiting for the direct snap. Has it. Hands it to Anagnos. Right hand side. Big hole. Shakes a couple plays and he's brought down at the got up to the 25 yard line of Portsmouth and tackled. Yeah, once again Bedford when they get into, tra into traffic they got two hands on the ball uh, which is a good thing to teach to make sure you, you, you don't give away you know you don't give the ball away on a fumble. Second to 15. Nice job. <coughs> ball on the 23 yard line. 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Robert comes back, far side, throws a little screen this way to Shabrick. Shabrick, 15, 10, 5, he's got to beat him. Touchdown. Nice little screen over the middle of the Shabrick. Yeah, I, I, I'm not seeing the energy level on the Portsmouth defense to attack the ball. There's a lot of backpedaling and um, doesn't seem to be, doesn't seem to be, uh, Aggressive enough that's going to you know that's going to be able to deter this Bedford offense. There is a These flag. guys are bringing it. There is a flag on the play, Steve. I missed that, so they're discussing whether that's going to come back. That's either going to be 34 to nothing or yep. Bedford gets a redo with a penalty. He's talking to Portsmouth, so I think it's on Bedford. So Probably a holding call. No flag. No flag. Picking it, it up. It's a touchdown. Well, that's what you do. They had a ref did a nice job there. They had a conference. I love making it. sure. I love when they do that. And it was just really great when the fans just sit tight, let yeah. them work it out. Nobody's making a mistake. It's yeah. just about getting the job right. You know that, Mike, has uh, done some serious uh, refereeing. You really appreciate when you are allowed to go out there and do your job. I and love it when they get together and yeah, say, what so did you I. see? What did you see? In the old days, you made the call. No one challenged yeah. you. Now they're encouraging guys to get together with baseball, football. And that was a prime example of what yeah. they did. They got together and they said, you know what? There really wasn't a flag. They yeah. picked it up. 34 to 6 Bedford. And we have a timeout Portsmouth with 34.5 seconds to go in the first quarter. Bedford leading 34 to 6. Wow. So, this is impressive. When? Why would Portsmouth call a timeout? I don't know why he doesn't call timeouts, and I'm not sure why he does. So <laughs> I don't I don't have an answer for you. All right. So <laughs> update from the volleyball game: we got a score of 22-22. Bedford wow. uh, Bulldogs visiting Nashua North, and this is their second game. That uh, again, they got to get the 25 and win by two. So it's pretty tight. We got we got an update coming in. 
23-23. This is a coming from Mary Beth Robinson, who's sitting in the stands in, in Nashua North. We want to thank MB for uh, stepping up and giving us the scores. She, Mary Beth Robinson, boy, I'll tell you, following all over the place, watching, I'll tell you, it's precious times. You don't want to miss anything. You I, I, right. I just, you know, that's great. And, and the kids know it. When mom's there, the kids know it. All right, so Bedford, they, after the timeout, they're coming out. Aiello's ready to put another point up there. He's ready to uh, kick it. Ball is down, snap, good. Ball is up. Yeah, once again, what plenty a great, of light. What a great hold right there. That kick was on the other side, and uh, nice nice job holding it. Aiello's, Aiello in number one, Connor uh, Crowley. They got a, we got a nice thing going there. You can obviously... You, you, it, there's no question that the amount of reps they must get a week to get this right from all different angles and it's you know this is the sort of thing special teams are such an important part when you play an equal uh, level opponent special teams can be the difference Steve it's the little things right it you is the little things right and it adds up and they're doing the little things right and it's adding up to the score of 35 to 6 here at Bedford Bulldog Stadium with still 34.5 seconds ago in the first quarter yeah What's Thank okay? You, stats. Yep, Harry's coming in. Uh, Ello's going to be kicking off. So uh, we got some stats from Harry. Winnicott at 14-7 over over Concord. Uh, Central Memorials tomorrow at 2 p.m. at Memorial. That's the uh, Shabbat McDonough Stadium on Jewett Porter. Uh, Londonderry seven zip halftime over Timberlane. Salem uh, Keens at Salem and, and losing 12-6. Uh, Salem was up. Anyways, Aiello, we'll get back to that. Aiello balls away, fielded deep, and Portsmouth's coming up to the 20, cuts back this way, sheds a couple of Bedford. Oh, I thought he shed them, but they reached out and just grabbed this kid and brought him down about the 16-yard line. If there's one thing that, it, that, that Portsmouth as a team, this isn't just one individual, whether you're running the ball, whether you're running a route, whether you're running the ball, you know, from a kick return, you, you attack, you find your lane and you attack it and you go. Yep. The side to side stuff that there seems to be systemic on the program may be able to beat a team like Spalding, but Bedford's going to chew you right up. So the Keen Blackbirds are visiting Salem and losing 12 6. Nashua North, 6 0 over Alvern. Goffstown's at Dover, no score yet. Exeter, 21 zip over Spalding. This, remember, Spalding took it on the chin last yeah. week against Portsmouth. BG is losing 13. 13 to 7 at Merrimack and Pinkerton 7 0 over Nashua South. Anyways, Graham flare out far side, caught immediately, bride swarmed by a slew of Bedford tacklers and maybe a yard gain. Maybe well, obviously, the Mike, they came with a game plan to attack Bedford East West. Um, I don't understand the scouting of it, but it's not working. Uh, you, it, at some point, you got to do some quick passes, yeah. and to be able to get in between the, the deep uh, defensive backfield and behind the backers, that seems to be the area that's open, and they just haven't chosen to attack it yet. The other benefit is, with a good rush like Bedford has, it allows the quarterback to set quickly and get rid of the, the ball. And you know what? If you can't win doing short passes, or if you're successful at doing it, that opens up the run. Yeah. Hey, listen, we've got, uh, thank you, Harry, for those scores. Another score in from Nashville North Volleyball. The Bedford girls lost to Nashville North in that second game, 25-23, so it's one game apiece. It's best one game five. apiece, right? Yeah, so is game. it best out of two out of three? Best of five. Best of five. Yeah. Okay, three out of five. Yeah. Well, oh, good luck, girls. So they're doing it. So Harry with the scores. Thank you, Harry, for that. He's going to keep them coming. Nice job. Um, the score that I'm kind of surprised at is the Merrimack BG score, Steve. Um, 13-7. What does that tell you? You saw BG last week, right? What did you see with them? Uh, BG lost its uh, its uh, number one um, running back. Oh, okay. Yep, and All that's right. that's uh, that's going to hurt Faulkner. That's going to hurt him. Uh, but they were still able to score some points. But you, it it looks to me like it's going to be a challenge for Coach Moore to be able to uh, to sustain it on defense. They they had a they gave up a lot of yardage last week on defense. First quarter stats. Steve, want to rattle them off? Sure. Connor Robert three for six for forty yards, yep. um, and uh, on uh, uh, passing for Graham four for twelve for eighty yards. A uh, lot of running with, with Bedford. Uh, that 40 yard seems a little light. Uh, I, I, I'm not sure about that, but it must be. Uh, uh, Harry's a stat guy. Bedford, 195 total yards and Portsmouth, 65. Not surprised so at that. So, obviously, uh, according to these stats, Bedford's been running the ball very successfully uh, and, and, and they've been going for a long way. And it, now that you come back and think of about it, there's been a lot of long runs, uh, long runs for Bedford by touchdown. All right. So here we go. Portsmouth now is its second quarter has just started and it is 35-6. 
uh, Portsmouth going from our right to left. Graham, one in the backfield with Graham, two to the right, two to the left, man in motion. Hands off to the guy in the middle, and he's immediately swarmed by a slew of Bedford guys, and he's brought right down. I'm not sure he got... So yeah, a real strong part of Bedford's game, Mike. You touched on it a few minutes ago. Is the defensive end play, as I watch the core, the first quarter develop as we approach the second, the, the, the decisions that the defensive uh, ends are making are stellar. Every time they're in the right place, they're waiting for the run to turn fully inside, and then they're closing up the inside quickly. Uh, doing a great job tonight. Single back with Graham. This time they bring three to the left and one to the right. Going from our right to left, Graham looking, wait, looking over the defense, makes a, looks at his arm pan, looks for an adjustment. Ball is snapped back, Graham straight back to pass, and now he's coming this way to throw down the middle, and that is caught. Nice catch, and then he was almost had his head taken off by Toscano. But uh, that was a nice catch by the Portsmouth kid, and I think that's number 81. Who do you got there, Steve? Yeah, D I think it was Toscano coming in for a full measure it, 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 deposit. It was Toscano. Uh, and, and fortunately for the Portsmouth player, he kind of slid to the right a little bit and was able to uh, soften that hit. But, boy, I'll tell you, that, that, that would have been a heavy load right there. You would have heard that up here. So here we Andrew go. Andrew Twite doing a great job watching him, focusing on him. Every defense, just a terrific job. Two to the left, two to the right. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting for the snap. Man in motion, number 81. Hands off, fake, little flare to 81, going far side. And he's at the line of scrimmage. And maybe, he, you know, he ran a lot to get two yards. Yeah, but that's just great cornerback. I'm trying to find who that was. Yeah, that's Mumpini, Lucian Mumpini. His, boy, I'll tell you, if you think you're going to run outside of him, you better bring a, a jet pack with you because you're not going to be, it's not going to happen. This kid's doing a great job. What, you know, the, the movement of the defensive backfield is really, uh, really getting good. The only mistakes they're making is they're leaving some receivers too early when uh, Graham's in the pocket. So I got, I got three to the right, two to the left, one in the backfield for Graham. Graham moving from our right to left. 10.35 to go till halftime. Bedford yeah. jumps, so he must have had a hard count, and he's going to yeah, cost him five. That's, that's a hard first count, down. and you got you're running a blitz. It happens. You know, just regroup. It's five yards. First down, though. First down. Actually, I think it's going to be a little short of a first down. Well, no, I, I think you're right. I, yeah, you're right, Mike. They got it. They got it marked at second and five. So let's see if they get it. Yeah, they're going to give it on. Yeah. How are they going to measure? Get. <laughs> well, we don't. Maybe you might be right, Steve. Maybe they didn't get it. They're going to measure this one. No, nope, they got it. They're going to give it to him. Yeah, please. That was just too... Uh... So All that's right. just a matter of Dimitri wanting to kind of slowly come up, get to the line. Two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Ball comes back. Graham goes back to pass. Comes this way. Caught number 11. Okay. And then swarmed down after a uh, four or five yard so game. Mike, that was uh, Trevor, ne Tra excuse me, Jacob Booten. Yeah, the that's that short, quick pass that I said is open. you got to get behind the linebackers underneath these safeties that are running, you know, three and five step reads. Uh, that's where it's open for Portsmouth. they got to keep attacking that. So now he's going to go three to the right, one to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham looking over the defense. Makes a check on his armband. Waiting for the play. Double checks that armband. Snap is back. He's back to pass. Going to flare it out to the guy in the backfield. Gets to the line of scrimmage and maybe three or four yards more. So a little positive play well, on that one. I mean, I like the play. It's, 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 it's taking the aggression of Bedford and, and countering it with a little flare pass. And what did, what did uh, I think that was 42, right? Who, who was the receiver on that? I didn't catch the name, but yeah, they, dig, I, they dig it into Bedford territory with 9.32 uh, to go in the half. I mean, he tucked it and ran right away. Sprinted. Uh, okay, so now Portsmouth comes out. Two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham back to pass, fires this way, and it is tipped incomplete. Yeah, really, really poor footwork by Graham there. He's, uh, I don't know if he's got a, if he has a sore leg or what, but it's almost like he's favoring his back foot. Not really setting well. The mechanics there were off, and that's why he kind of released the pass at about five feet above the ground. KK Tor is number 22 in the backfield. Maybe that was the guy you talked about that play before for Portsmouth. I think it was. Let's yep. watch him now. Two to the right, two to the left, tour in the backfield with Graham. Graham fourth checking down. his arm, Bam. It is fourth down and two to go. Ready to get the play. Graham back the pass. 
holds, tucks it, comes up, and he gets the first down. So I mean, this this is a better offense for Portsmouth because when they're running short passes, they're doing flare passes, and then the quarterback, what did he do? Did he sit in the pocket for five seconds, or did he tuck it and run? Tucked it and run, he went right upfield 100 miles an hour. That's where they're going to be able to succeed it, it, if they're going to be able to at all against the Bedford uh, defense. All right, so Graham brings his Portsmouth Clippers out. Ball's on the 44-yard line, 9.05 to go in the, uh, till halftime. Portsmouth needs to stop chipping away, and they've got to get bigger yards if they're going to get back into this game. So two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Man in motion. Hands off to the motion guy coming this way. Cuts it up. And he's been met by. I mean, well, they go right back guys. to the East West game. Yeah, I mean, after yards. about 38 plays in a row that you run East West, it's just not working, Mike. Agreed? I totally agree, yeah. yeah. But I mean, they started making the ball up the field, flare passes, short passes, and then tuck and runs. I mean, that's what Bedford's given you. You don't take what you want, you take what they give you. It's kind of right. like e eating at my, my mom's house. You know, I, I don't get, <laughs> I take what she gives me. Fortunately, she was a good cook. I'm sure. Two to the right, two to the left. Graham and single back of the backfield. Graham goes straight back. Now he's under a lot of pressure. Throw it away. From bed. That's Anagnos on him. And he try he gets it downfield complete, but not enough. That gets to the 39-yard line. I'm not sure the risk is worth the reward on that pass. I mean, in that situation, you, I mean, it's it's a... That's a tough one. He made it, though. Well, Give him credit. Graham kept his head up and saw, he does. saw somebody downfield with Anagnos breathing down his back. So, yep. Yep. Good heads up move. And that would be a little nerve-wracking. the senior co-captain. So, KK tore in the backfield with Graham. Nice radiation we have by the band. Three to the left, one to the right. Graham checking his armband for the play. Checking over the bed for defense. Graham waiting for the ball. Snap back. Graham comes this way, looking to pass. Comes back. A lot of pressure and missed. Look downfield. He's firing downfield, and he's That's got a guy wide a open. Play. Touchdown! Wow. This is this is him at his best. That was a great play by Graham. Yep. Cody three, Graham. Three times when he gets outside of the pocket, his eyes are downfield all the time. Give this young man credit. He's, hey, the other thing, he's he shifting. a strike. There were two or three Bedford guys ready to bury this kid, and he shifted a little bit and got away and then planted his feet and yeah. chucked it down there for a touchdown. But, you know, if you come back, you go back to Portsmouth, win or lose, and but this game's far from over, but if you, if you, make, if you have these good moments, this is something you can build on during the week. They're not giving up. So Portsmouth's ready to kick this thing. That's number 81. That's Hunter Adams. For the point after, ball is down, kick is up, and it is that good. That was good. Yeah. So Hunter Adams with the point after. And now with 7-10 to go till halftime, 35-13 Bedford. Um, Got to give it all to uh, Cody Graham in that last play. Cody Graham did a nice job, and I think when they're giving him the plays that Bedford's give, I mean, that, that obviously, he broke outside the pocket. And uh, I think, you know, just to focus here on Bedford, there does seem to be a little breakdown here, Mike, with some of these deep pass routes with Bedford where the cornerbacks and the safeties aren't staying. In other words, they believe he's done. He, they believe that Graham's cooked. You've got to stay with him to whist from whistle to whistle. Yeah. I don't know if you're seeing that or not, but there's been a lot of those plays tonight, and this is an area where, yeah. uh, where Coach is going to have to work on during the week. So an update in Game 3 down in Nashua North. Bedford is leading in that volleyball game 10-4. to And... Uh, we have uh, a thank you, MB, for that update in Game 3 down in Nashua North. 7-10 to go until halftime. Now Portsmouth will be kicking off, and they'll be going, for, and Bedford will retrieve the ball and going from our left to right. So here we go. Portsmouth kicks away. It's a little squib on the ground. They learned their lesson not to kick it deep. Handled by Bedford. Bedford coming this way. That's Mumpini, and he gets up to about the 35-yard line. Late push on a Bedford guy. No flag. So 34 yard line looks like. Okay, so 7.04 to go till halftime. 35 13, the Bedford Bulldogs handling the Portsmouth Clippers on a beautiful night in September here in Bedford, New Hampshire after a very rainy night last night. We got some updated scores. We're going to get to that right in a minute. We have to this play. Bedford comes out with their spread offense. Robert empty backfield. Three to the right, two to the left. And uh, now um, Norfleet comes in the backfield. 
Hand off to Norfleet. Coming this way right up the middle. Good hole. Good blocking. Positive yards. 10 yards. Nice job by Thomas Norfleet. Update on the scores from Harry. Uh, we're going we're gonna to check that because Bedford comes up to the line real, real fast. We have uh, three to the right, one to the left. One in the backfield with Robert. Robert takes a direct snap, goes to, no, he keeps it and comes far side, comes up the sideline. He almost gets 10 yards, so. Yeah, terrific, quick, terrific quick run. Play. See was, him setting up his blocker, such a yeah. leader. Worked with his downfield blocker, made sure he had a, had the inside seal. He said he wanted to go outside. Well, that fake to Norfleet, and everyone yeah. jumped on him. Oh. He just turns outside and gets positive yards. Almost the first time. Actually, they only gave him. How do you defend seven, that as a linebacker crew, Mike? I mean, how do you defend that? I mean, he's holding it in the bread. Uh, basket. Two to the left, two to the right. Norfleet in the backfield. Direct snap. Fake to Norfleet. Robert down far side. Going to Shabrick and that's incomplete. He threw it where he had to throw it yep. to be safe. That's yep. a good job. Nice One. pass. Yep. Over his shoulder. Yep. The only guy who's going to catch it was going to be Shabrick and if not it was going out of that's bounds. That's exactly. So yep. Well done. Connor's uh, back in more comfortable again in the pocket. Had a couple plays there. He seemed like a little bit uh, six out of sync but he's right back. 6.41 to go. Bedford now into uh, Portsmouth's territory in the 49-yard line going from our left to right. Robert Snap fakes, comes this way, scrambling, take, tucks it and goes, sees a hole, 40, 35, 30, 25, goes out of bounds on the 25-yard line, forced out of bounds, great. great. So there's a smart quarterback run. He's not going to turn in and try to lower his shoulder. Uh, he, he goes out of bounds and after a great gain in the first down. Super and, job. And again, Bedford with this fast, hurry-up offense. Portsmouth trying to keep up with them. I'm not sure they're going to be able to do this um, all day. Three to the left, one to the right. Looks like we got Ananos in the backfield. Faked Ananos, Robert back, looks, looks, fires downfield, and in and out of the hands of Mumpini. Yeah, Mumpini was set a little bit awkward there. He, as he turned around, he didn't have a good footing. And as a result, it kind of went through his hands. But uh, So 6.21 to go, and Bedford comes out. Three to the left, one to the right. Looks like we got Toscano in the backfield now. Now a little flare over this way. That's to Connor Crowley, and he trips his way for about a three-yard gain. Nice job there. I'm trying to get the number on that defender. That's a great job of an open field tackle by 14 uh, Jack Russo. Nice job, Jack. Great tackle. All right, so it looks like Toscano in the backfield with Robert. We got three to the right, one to the left. Ball comes back, fake to Toscano. Robert's under pressure, fires downfield, and overthrows Shabrick. Yeah, Connor working a little bit back with there off his back foot. Had, uh, uh, Portsmouth had a pretty good rush there. Uh, yeah. Did a nice job, got some pressure on him. Yeah, unusual. Remember we were talking the beginning points of the game, keys of the game. Portsmouth has got to get more aggressive from the defensive line with blitz packages to try to throw Connor off like, like that one. you got to pressure any quarterback who runs a spread offense that is a threat to run, threat to th a threat to throw. you got to put pressure on him. We talked about that earlier. Get him off his game. Get him off his game. Okay, so here we go. Now we got a nice, uh, we got a field goal attempt here, and this is going to be um, a yellow. He's got the 2017 ball is up in wow. downfield, and it is good. What a terrific job. <laughs> what a nice job. 40 yard field goal. That was beautiful. I told you the kid's got a leg. Yeah, he's got a leg, and it's accurate. So with 5.52 to go, and a yellow adds three more to the score. And now we got a 38 to 13 score still in the first half. We, uh, I mean, that was great. I mean, talk about talk about the weapons that Stank has, Coach Stank has at his disposal. I mean, you got all these guys who can run, pass, throw, and you got a kid that can kick a 40 yarder. How good is that? Real good. I mean, and you're going to need that when you get down to the last four or five teams in Division One. You're going to have to have those weapons. I think what what really impresses me is the um, the development of the Bedford program going from. Um, Nothing wrong with it, it with a lot of celebration and, and excitement, but there's no chest beating with this team. And I noticed this last year. I think it's a huge factor of their success because chest beating is about me and Stank is about team. And everything you do is your contribution to what you can provide for your teammates. And you can just see that those actions out in the field. A yellow back to kick. Kick is away. It's a line drive kick and handled by Portsmouth. Portsmouth come up to the 20. Shifts a, shifts a tackler, 25. On far side, gets out to about the 29-yard nice line. Back. Nice yep, run nice back. Nice run back. 
So we talked about, let's talk about, let's go back to um, Aiello and that kick. Mm -hmm. Now, three or four years ago, maybe even longer, even when the program started, they never really had a kicker. So if you were down in that territory in a fourth down play, what did you do? You went for it. You went for it. You ran an offensive play. Now they got this kid with a leg, and now they're showing all different aspects of the game by able to kick a field goal and kick a 40 yard. What this really pretty, does pretty is set. Well, we'll wait for the. Okay. We'll, wait for, uh, we'll talk about that after play, Mike, maybe? We got it. Yep. So single back in the backfield with Graham. He's got three to the left, one to the right. Checks his wrist for the for this uh, play, comes back, drops right back, fires back this one, and a little screen. Number 21 cuts in and uh, maybe a two-yard game. Took a long play to develop. One thing about Portsmouth is, is, again, it's the beginning of the year. The coaches will get it right, but everything Portsmouth does other than these quick passes and stuff, just taking the flare pass, that they did, it's just taking way too long to develop. Bedford's way too fast a defense to do that. All right, so... Uh, Portsmouth comes out. They go two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham waiting, looking over, looks at his wrist again to run the play. Goes back, man in motion. Second man through at the line of scrimmage and nowhere. He had three cuts by the running back before he even met the hole. If, if you're going to go against Bedford's defense, you got to do a quick block because these guys know how to release from the offensive lineman. So you got to get to that to that hole quickly. I just, you know, I can't say enough. Problem it, is, there, there was enough no, times. no hole with that Bedford D. But you at least got to get to the line uh, as quick as you put. You can't do three cuts. You got to yeah. go for it and take what they give you. Twight, Falvey, Colmer, Bourgeois. That's that's a Solid load. That's core. a load up front. Solid for Bedford. Core. Yep. All right, so they go two to the right, two to the left, single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham looking over the defense, goes back, straight back, looking to throw, fires downfield, and it is Ooh. incomplete on a great I knew he was going to call. I was just going to say oh, headshot. Mon you know, Monpini just Excellent got him on a call. headshot. Excellent call. Can't do it. Uh, and uh, I don't think in, in the situation, was it Mumpini? I think so. Yeah. Well, whoever it was, uh, 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 you just can't do that. I don't think it was intentional. He was down low. I don't think it was intentional either. But you still have to make the call to, to make sure these players understand you can't you we, can't allow remember, a player the Port, shoulder. The Portsmouth, I, I saw the Portsmouth the defender, he was just trying to catch it, was falling backwards. So he came a little lower. Mumpini came in high. I don't think it was intentional. Yeah. There was contact. But you have to make that call as an official. Absolutely. Because they're trying to clear up concussion. And they're trying to clear up football yep. all across the board, youth, high school, college, these, pros. These kids are students that are looking to build a better future. The amount that go to the NFL to make a living off this is essentially nil. Uh, and uh, you, you got to protect these young men. So, again, unintentional, but the, the refs got to make a statement. As far as Aiello, Mike, uh, what, it, what it does is changes your whole strategy. Uh, now, if you can measure where I where you got to get to, instead of getting to the 10 to kick a field goal, you can get to the 30 yard line or 25 yard line with Aiello. That's Absolutely. a big advantage. Big advantage. Okay, two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham checks his wrist for the play. Checks it again. Looking over the bed for defense. Snap comes back. Graham straight back to pass. Back looking, looking far side fires, and it Good. is incomplete on the far side. That's the so. sort of pocket movement we're looking for Graham from Portsmouth's perspective. He straddled the line, eyes downfield. He's at the sideline. We can get out. He has, he has multiple options. He can throw it out of bounds. He can run out of bounds or, or turn up field, run out of bounds, get back to the line of scrimmage, or, th or throw throw a dart. And yeah. uh, he did a good job. That was, that was, even though they didn't complete the pass, uh, good update, work. Update on the volleyball score, 18-16. Bedford's up in the third game. they got to go to 25 and trying to take a two games to one lead. Portsmouth comes out, two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham, man, man in motion, coming this way. First guy through, hands off, and he gets nowhere. He was so, stopped at the line of scrimmage. So you got the quarterback who just handed the ball off and didn't even draw a fake. He just handed it off and stood there. I mean, that's not that's not what the spread's about. Yeah. Spread's about making the fake, really handing off, and act like you've got the ball. I yeah. mean, no wonder you got five black jerseys going out. You know, there's no no difficulty to read there. Great call, Steve. Once again, great analysis by Steve Beals up here high above the field at Bulldog Stadium. 3.46 to go to halftime. Two to the right, two to the left. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham takes a snap, goes straight back, looking to throw, looking to throw under pressure. He's Now he's trying to run out. No way. No, that looks like that was uh, Bourgeois that brought him down. That's he's, number, as number I said, three, Andrew four. Twight and Colin Bourgeois are doing a fantastic job tonight on defensive end. They own the line of scrimmage. They're taking their, their, their containment steps, yeah. and they're just doing a terrific job sliding inside. Kristen Bourgeois. 
Christian Bouchard. I'm sorry. That's okay. Yeah. We'll, sorry. we'll get it right. We'll get it. Give me a third game. We'll, we'll have it. this right. <laughs> third, third home third, game. Third or fourth game. We'll get the names right. Yeah. Three. Well, Bill provides us a jar of jelly beans. Every mistake we make, we lose one. Usually yeah. by the fourth quarter, we're yeah, out. We're so out. I, yeah. I want to have something to eat at the end of the game, so I got to Three oh one to go. Three under three minutes and counting till halftime. Bedford up thirty eight thirteen, and I'm not sure why they're taking all this time. With TV the clock TV going. commercial it's, break. It, I think it's is what not it is. though. Yeah. Now the official calls. Well, the all this out. technology that Jennings has got here for BC TV, it's no wonder. I wouldn't be surprised if they're doing some commercials they, they, right they, now. They, they buzz the ankle, and all of a sudden, no the TV money making. Out. This is public service, baby. <laughs> That's right. No money making. I love it. That's a Portsmouth timeout. Thank you, Chris. Portsmouth takes a timeout. They're one left uh, till half. Um, update down in Nashua North. The Bedford Lady, uh, the Bedford Bulldogs, 21-20 in the third game. What's that connection? Hey, let me tell you. <laughs> hey, it's it's sports. Roma Roma has it during sports during, during the uh, the Olympics. There was beach volleyball. Mike has been known to go through like two cases of popcorn, microwave popcorn, watching that from time in. So he is a he's a volleyball. Somebody wouldn't have a daughter on that. It has nothing to do with his daughter and his wife <laughs> at the game. <laughs> Has nothing to do with that. I'm 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 a hometown guy. I call volleyball. I call football. I'd call I'd call basketball. I'd call tiddlywinks if there was a Bedford team out there. But we're going to give everyone equal footing today <laughs> if we get the scores. So Harry's working on the other scores. We should get some more scores at halftime from Harry Kozlowski from 105.1 Bedford Radio. Three under three minutes, 2:48 to go. It's fourth and eight on the 47-yard line. Of Portsmouth, uh, Graham, no one in the backfield. Straight back, looking at the pass, getting some pressure, fires downfield, and that is that's caught. Excellent. That's a great catch yeah, just for a force, not first down. And that's number 81. That's uh, Hunter Adams. Yep. I mean, this is, uh, this is Graham getting comfortable. Uh, had a little room there, had a little area to sit in the pocket and did a nice job. He can fire a ball. 2.39 to go till halftime, and they just moved the sticks into bed, uh, in further into Bedford territory down at the 44-yard line. So Graham, one in the backfield with Graham, two to the right, two to the left. Checks the wristband for the play. Waiting for the snap, straight back to pass. Holding back there, fires far side. That's caught out to the 40-yard line, immediately brought down. So, As we were talking before, that short pass range is working for Portsmouth underneath the, the, uh, de the uh, deep defensive backfield and behind the linebackers. So what, what this does is begins to force the linebackers to stay back a little bit, which opens up the, the run. Two minutes and counting till halftime. Uh, Portsmouth is on the Bedford 40-yard line, second and five. Moving from our right to left, Graham, empty backfield. Three to the left. Now we got a motion guy coming here. Hands off the motion coming this way. I, I, cuts, I, tries to come back. He's going, no, no, he does get back. He's still, now he cuts back the other way. Missed tackle, missed tackle. Out to the first. Boy, we had about six guys. I think he ran 40 yards to get 10, him. right? Somewhere around no, there. No, he needed five. Yeah, and I, and I think he five. got the first down. Yeah, I mean, but that that's not the way you want to get a first down. You want to, They're doing such a great job. Then they go this east to west stuff. It's it's really uh, going to present a challenge for them. They're just having real trouble getting around the edge due to the defensive uh, and great play and overall defensive line. Cornerbacks are coming up, stopping it. It's just uh, from an offensive standpoint that uh, Bourgeois is getting comfortable. Let him do what he does Will, best. Will Connor in the backfield with Connor Graham, and they go three to the left, one to the right. Graham waiting for the snap, straight back. Connor comes this way, a little flare pass, and he just he flare pass, and he just threw it. it just missed him. Yeah, he was getting a pretty good rush there. Uh, number seventy, number seventy-nine from Bedford. Uh, Seth uh, Jack O'Donnell, I believe, is. Uh, I was able to take that big pursuit, frame and yeah. work his way through. 1.37 to go. Clock stops. It's fourth and one on the Bedford 36. And Portsmouth with a three to the left, one to the right. Single back in the backfield with Graham. Graham checks the defense. Checks it. Waiting for the snap. Ball comes back. Graham keeps it, and he's in trouble in the backfield. Now slips a tackle, and I think they stopped him. They yeah, I, th I, I think he short Mike no. by about a half a yard. Yeah, no yeah. question they stopped him. Good stand him. by Bedford filling that in. Yeah. 
And that's going to be turnover by Downs. Bedford's going to get it with 129 to go. So he, here's a question for you. 129 sure. to go. They're up 38-13. Take an eagle into the uh, halftime, or do you try and march this thing down in a minute 29 and stick it in the end minute zone? Minute 29, I think it's, it's way too early in the game to be taking knees. I think that, that might just motivate the opposition at this juncture of the game as opposed to if it's in the, you know, the end, towards the end of the fourth quarter. But, uh, no, I would try to use this time to get an Aiello 40-45 yard kick unless they can get it further downfield. And that's what they're doing with uh, two, uh, three to the right with man in motion coming this way. Hands off to fake the hand off to Montini and Robert takes it. Gets almost to midfield. He got it back though. And then he's brought down. What an athlete. And we have a Portsmouth kid down. Looks like he's a little winded. They're going to call timeout. Yeah, that, that injury is going to help Bedford with their clock management. Uh, that's a tough one. Um, for the for the, uh, the Portsmouth side of the ball, but obviously safety comes first, and uh, you have to you have to call a timeout here. And in in high school football, unlike the pros, when you get inside of two minutes, uh, it does not matter if you're injured, you stay there because the protection of these young men and uh, and and uh, are it's just a critically important. Looks like a knee issue. Can't tell if it's a. If it's a if it's a strain or a cramp or what, but looks like they're working on the ankle. All right. So in the third game down in Nashua North, Bedford is 25-24, and uh, they got to win by two. So we haven't got the update on that one. But Harry just gave me the updated scores. Went kind of 27. Excuse me, 22 to seven over Concord. Again, Central Memorial starts tomorrow at 2. Londonderry, 14-7 over Timberlane. Salem putting up the numbers against Keene, 29-6. Nashua North, 19-6 over Alvern. Goffstown, Dover, no score. That might be a Saturday game. We're not sure. Exeter, 21-0 over Spalding. And Merrimack, um, 20, over, uh, 20 strong over uh, BG, 27-7. And Pinkerton holding on to that. Uh, we'll just put another touchdown up, 14-7 over Nashua South. So. Nice, nice, warm home crowd hand for the, uh, po for the uh, visitors player, uh, Jaden Rivera. That's always nice to see in high school football. And, uh, you know, it... it don't tell me those kids don't hear it, and it, it, it turns them into, it's all part of the development of a, of a young American citizen, that uh, this is what we do. We, we play hard against each other, but when somebody's injured, yeah. you know, we, we, we... Well, you feel for him, you feel for the family. Oh, yeah, second game of the year. Listen, as I like to say, they, you know, it could have been a lot worse. He's sitting up in the cart, and they're bringing him over to the, uh, to the ambulance to bring him to the hospital. So yeah, and, and, and especially when, I mean, obviously Jaden's a junior. So especially when they're seniors, which Jaden is not, yeah. that's just such a big, big uh, disappointment for the kids when they get in their senior year, and this is the, you know, this is their turn to be the upperclassmen in the senior class. So all right, so we're going to try and get this half completed with 123 to go, and Bedford going from our left to right at midfield. Um, looks like we have uh, is that Northfleet in the backfield with Robert, yep. and two to the right, two to the left. Robert waiting, looking over the defense. Uh, officials getting out of the way now, ready for the snap. Robert, snap comes back, looks back, looks far side, hits that Shabrick, gets a first down. Nice pass. That was, uh, that was Toscano in the backfield, excuse me. Nice time pass on the L pat with, with um, Toscano. Uh, that was a Shabrick with the with the Shabrick, catch, I mean, yeah. excuse me. So, again, Toscano in the backfield with Robert. Two to the right, two to the left. Straight back, fake to Toscano. Looks downfield, fires downfield. Tipped and almost tipped away. Going to Mumpini on that one, and Mumpini went back to get. That would have been a heck of a catch if he got that, but incomplete. If you're going to use the five-yard rule, that was triple coverage. Probably not the best pass uh, choice by Connor to make uh, in that situation. Obviously, when you're up 38 to 13, you're probably going to be a little more aggressive. But Plenty of protection back there. Yeah. Though, so the offensive yeah. line's doing a good job protecting him. So two to the right, two to the left. Toscano in the backfield. Hit Toscano coming this way, running hard over the 40. Gets to the 35, bangs a couple defenders, gets down to the 32-yard line. Yeah, not not great form tackling. Early in the year, tackling takes a while, but uh, Portsmouth not demonstrating good square to the line, uh, hit, wrap, and drive tackling. The form is a little off. A lot of guys getting turned, their hips are turning sideways, and they're getting beat on the inside or out, getting turned on the outside. Uh, 
so, obviously need some work in that area, Mike, defensively. Yeah, it looks like Bedford just called the timeout with a minute to go. We're, we're trying to get to halftime. I here think they're trying to set up Aiello. I think that, that Coach Stank knows he's got a weapon here, and he wants to develop as many real-time opportunities as possible. So this just is so important. for 43. This would yeah. be a 50-yarder if they tried it. That would be yeah, but he's not looking at a 50-yarder. He's looking at... Uh, well, right. if he's at the 33... I think he'll let him wing it. I do. I think he'll let him do it. Yeah. But um, certainly I think he's probably looking for another seven or eight yards to get, to, to, you know, if you look at Aiello's kicks, unless he's got a longer leg that he's not showing, uh, that looked about where it was. 42, 43 yard field goals, 45 maybe. All right, so we got Anagnos in the I'd love him to prove me now. wrong, Mike. Yeah, me too. That'd so we great. got uh, two to the right. One to the left, Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Third and two, Robert, direct snap, comes right up the middle, has got the first down, gets to the 20-yard line. So. Now he's clearly within them, and they still have now a first down. So, yeah. Uh, Portsmouth really struggling on defense right now. The edge is getting, a not, you know, really beaten pretty handily there. And as a result, I don't see a lot of uh, cornerbacks that are looking forward to come up and make the tackle, Mike. I don't know what you're seeing. Robert fakes to Angmas, keeps it left-hand side, and he mm. falls forward for maybe a two-yard game. Never so want your comp, your qu ever want your quarterback diving forward. Timeout, Bedford. Off of his feet. So the only reason I can see Bedford calling timeout, Steve, is that they do want to get Aiello into this game and kick another one. Yeah. I can't imagine him calling the timeout up 38-13. Well, I mean, it's, it was clear. Once Bedford had the ball, you saw what they were trying to accomplish. He's trying to trying to get him an opportunity. So Bedford burns their second timeout. They got one left. 45.8 seconds ago until halftime. 38-13. Bedford leading. Let's see what they got up their sleeves. It's going to be second and nine on the 19. We've got uh, Anagnos going to be in the backfield. Three to the left, one to the right. Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Ready to, looking over the defense. Robert ready to take the snap. Snap comes back. Hands off to Anagnos. Far side. He gets swallowed up. He's not going anywhere by a host of uh, Portsmouth players. I think that play, I'm not sure, was designed to go in the in, the next uh, number on the inside. I think uh, I think that uh, Dimitri got caught a little fire on the outside in that run. The blocking was there if he turned up immediately. Under 25 seconds now. Snap back. Robert goes back. Fires downfield. And that's a touchdown. Nice play. Wow. Yep, nice pass. 16, Glennon. Yeah, he's just Connor. Uh, Connor's got weapons, and he has the talent. And but uh, that's and then if, so if you give the weapons and the talent time, boy, those three things together can cause havoc uh, to the opposing team. Yeah, boy. that's exactly what's going on. So we'll be going to running time in the second half now. Absolutely, yeah. So with 17.7 uh, seconds to go, uh, Yellow's going to go back for his. Uh, I apologize. A 30 or 35. 35, I believe. Kenny, is it 30 or 35 for running time? 35. 35, well, thank you. Yeah, so we're a little it short. Is good. So we won't go to running time in the second half. Well, we will open. when we score a couple more. Well, yeah, but I'm saying to open. Yeah. Yeah. 45 13, Bedford. 17 seconds to go until halftime. So to jump ahead of you, I would kneel if I was Portsmouth. I would. I mean, there's nothing to gain here by other than going in the half and just uh, running the clock out. Don't try to do something. Yeah. Uh, what What was I thinking, telling Coach Tank to uh, kneel with a minute 29 to go? Well, I, I just weapons. I, I, <laughs> I just think. I just think that. I think that you, run, no matter what the score, you run hard all the way midway through the third quarter, no matter what the score is, and then you start getting your twos and threes in, and no, no alternate, no opposing coach is going to have a problem with that because, you know, that's just way too much time to be left before you got to keep running and uh, so c coming up at halftime uh, we got a nice interview that had Harry cost uh, Ca Harry K put together with coach Stank at halftime we're gonna have the Bedford band we got all kinds of entertainment so uh, everyone stick around for the interview with the coach and that that great Bedford band out there and don't be surprised if you get some volleyball cut-ins from Mike coming in well at we'll give you before when we come back we're gonna <laughs> give you an update on that one because hopefully the Bedford girls will put it together it is 7-7 so keep ball, you posted anyway. We'll keep you posted.
What's that, Bill? Pete McDonald's coming up. Pete's going to be taking over the show here at halftime and giving everybody a nice overview of the Bedford band. It's about to step on the field with 12.7 seconds to go. And we're hoping Portsmouth takes a knee, but who knows? Yeah. Uh, I haven't been right yet. Why start? Harrison Lagulin down here riding the bike. I'm just looking at the motion, the rhythm of it. Dun, 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 dun. They're waiting for Toto yeah. in the little back basket there. Yeah, they're in the uh, victory formation. They're going to take a knee, and here we yeah, go. Smart move by knee, And so that's going to bring us into halftime with the score. Bedford 45, Portsmouth 13. Folks, stand by for the uh, interview with Coach Dank and, and uh, the, Bedford, the Bedford Band W uh, B and h Radio, BCTV. Thanks for joining us. Your halftime show is here. We're here in Bedford on a beautiful night. Yeah. A lot of storms last night, but tonight's just a gorgeous night. Nice, cool air. You can really feel the falls in the air, and it's football. Okay, so Portsmouth tried to kick it off. There it goes. Goes deep down to Mumpini, and he just lets it go into the uh, into the uh, end zone. Not a bad time. move, letting that go through. It would have been a difficult uh, catch. You don't want to be fumbling it back there and then have the... So, not that... Portsmouth Clippers Bedford come down needs to, put to make a lot of adjustments, but what do you say to a team that's up 45-13 at halftime, Steve? I think you talk about penalties. You, you talk about some of the defensive secondary um, mistakes. Um, just continue to, to make your team um, mistake-free. And, like and the talent is just there. The game plan is there. The execution is there. Looks like Norfleet in the backfield. Hands off to Norfleet right up nice. far side. Nice cut. Gets over 10 yards, still on his feet, 15, 20 yards, 25, still not tackled out to midfield. That's 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 a. If you want to run that film on how not to tackle, show that play. Well, I was talking about that, Mike, uh, before the half, the first half ended, and uh, they're not square to the line. There's a little bit of uh, um, well, I can't get there, can you? As opposed to make it me, and and that's an important part of creating a defense that swarms. And uh, two to the left, one to the right, two in the backfield, man in motion. Hands off, Norfleet, left-hand side, far side, bouncing off of players, gets another six or seven yards. Yeah, Norfleet's uh, lowering his shoulder there and uh, delivering the hits rather than taking them, and uh, that's never a good sign for defense when that's happening to you. So we have two to the right, one to the left, two in the backfield with Robert, split in the backfield with Robert. Robert direct snap. Hands the ball. Robert fakes it. Goes up the middle. Comes this way to the 40, 35. Down to about the 34, 33-yard line of Portsmouth with 108 to go. Well, one of the things that uh, you see right there is number 33 uh, from Bedford. Um, Toscano. Toscano. Doing a great job running down the field. Still pretending it got a ball all the way into the secondary. That's just terrific. Had had uh, the cameraman faked out. That's left, just good execution. One to the right. Robert goes back, fires this side. Looks like the Bedford. Nice tip by down. number 22 from Portsmouth, uh, uh, KK Tor. Uh, first time we named, we uh, called that name out. He targeted Glennon. Glennon fell down incomplete. So 10:56 to go. Second and ten on the 34-yard line of Bedford, going from our left to right. Toscato in the backfield with Robert. Two to the right, one to the left. Robert. Fakes to Descano, comes this way, big hole, 30, 25, 20, down to like the 16-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Did you see what Roberts did right there as he approached the line, waiting for his blocks to develop, and then when once the block is sealed and he ha he gets his hand underneath, then he yeah. bolts. Fired, fired through. Fired through. Great job. So Anagnos in the backfield now, two to the left. Had a great to night right. tonight, Dimitri has. Yeah, Robert. Portsmouth guy thought he jumped off. He didn't. Robert checks it at the line. Uh, 10.49 to go in the third quarter. He comes up to the line, rechecks the play. Inignaz stays in the backfield. Robert ready for the snap. Snap back. Fake to Inignaz. Looks this way. Fires downfield. Almost intercepted. A kid yep. from Portsmouth in his hands. Well, there's that a, going there's a situation there, Mike. We have three... You have three defenders with two receivers, but what's the problem? The two receivers' patterns were within two yards of one another. That's never a good thing. Connor saw that, but the, the, the receiver's got to run more accurate routes. To, that can't happen. Second and 10, 10.44 to go. Ball's on the 17-yard line. Anagnos in the backfield with Robert. Come back, 
Robert straight back under pressure. Whoa. Little screen to Anagnos over the middle. Complete. Cuts back this way. Ten cuts back in the middle to the five, to the two-yard line. What a great run. Nice job. I like screen. the way Dimitri uh, 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 holds, uh, carries the ball. Carries it very with, with protection. Uh, made some nice north-south cuts right there. But... That was, whoever made that play call read it upstairs. That was a good job. Nice play. In nice call. In the backfield. Two to the right, two to the left. Robert hands off to Anagnos right up the middle, and he's in. Touchdown. One guy had a shot at him, but he gave up. So that's going to keep so the clock going. Now the clock will spin the for clock sure. Will spin. Portsmouth really struggling on defense, Mike, with the tackling. It's just uh, yeah. uh, a lot of fundamental work needs to be done. No question. So here we go. A little go. surprising because the Clippers have a really good junior program. Ball's that down. Leads in. A yellow kick is good. Good. So Portsmouth, one of those programs that moved up to Division One, always been a solid program. Have an excellent junior program, leading kids in. A little surprising. Uh, that, that they're not more competitive, especially I know that Spalding isn't a strong program this year, but, you know, with the upside-down score, I thought I was going to get a little more to see uh, tonight. Um, but I think Bedford's made some big strides in improvement um, I just think, week. and you're absolutely right, but I just think Bedford is just so much better than the competition. Now, yeah. we haven't seen Exeter, we haven't seen Pinkerton, we haven't seen Central, who was going to give you a battle. Merrimack's the winning. Merrimack. Yep. So, but the Nash we'll, was. we'll take this win over a real supposedly gutsy Portsmouth team. And they were talking about this kid, Cody Graham, quarterback, who's the real deal. But Bedford I think he is the real up. deal. I think he's, yeah. a, he's, a, he's a good quarterback. Yeah. Uh, what I'm seeing is just guys just not making the effort to square up and tackle. Yeah. Uh, to man, I'm not seeing the, the man enough that you would think you would normally see from Portsmouth team. They may be just having a bad night. But, you know, they got some work to do when they go back this week. All right. So Aiello's ready to kick it off to Portsmouth. Kick is up. Kick is nice. Deep end over end. Portsmouth takes it up the field right in the middle and then nice. gets immediately brought down. Got to the 20-yard line. We well, think he got to the 20-yard line, but not much. So 10, 13 to go, and the clock is ticking under NHIAA rules. The uh, the clock is ticking, so we're uh, 10:02 to go. We're uh, Bed Bedford is is taking really control of this game with the clock with the clock ticking. 9:54 to go. So <laughs> all right. So Portsmouth's back for the uh, for the play. We got Cody Graham two in the backfield. Try goes to the left hand side immediately brought down. So it's uh, uh what are you talking about, Bill? So at nine nine eighteen, Portsmouth is is out of formation. Here we go. They got two in the backfield with Graham, two to the right, one to the left. Graham checks his armband again for the play. Waiting for the snap. Comes back. Goes back to pass. Looks under pressure. Scrambles this way now. Good blocking. Coming this way. He's going to chuck it now across the field and incomplete. He ran a lot trying to chuck it across the field, but nothing happened with 8.50 to go in the uh, in the third quarter. Clock's ticking there, Steve. That was a, kind of a weird play we just watched. Yeah. Um, clock is going... Now, my understanding is, just talk, I think Kenny uh, Grass had talked to us last week about that. Penalties, um, touchdowns, and there was a third thing. Injuries. Injuries, yeah. Those are the three reasons, the only three reasons. And timeout, excuse me. Thank you, Ken, uh, that the clock will stop. That's coming from a very apt and able clock man. Two to He's the been right, doing two Bedford to the left, High School two in the backfield with for Graham. Many, Graham right from the inception, is isn't it? For the play. Snap Ken Grasset. Back, drops back the pass. Steve Kelleher pressure, calling the plays. It, I think that Yankees time, hat goes back swarmed. to the 30s, no if I'm not sure. No way getting out of that, uh, that rush. So, 8.03 to go, and Cody Graham gets sacked. 7.57 and counting. I will. So, fourth down. They're going to have to kick this thing away. 
we do have an update in volleyball. The Bedford girls volleyball team did win their first match of the season against Nashua North in their fourth game, winning 27-25. So congratulations to the girls volleyball team. I think, I, yeah, now that, I have uh, it. For that chance, for that turn first it up win. just a little bit. Portsmouth kicks the ball away and with the clock ticking at 7.23 and Bedford up 52-13. I mean, this thing is done. This thing's a foregone conclusion. We're waiting for the JV team to come in and then we might be looking at another interview in the fourth quarter or something, but yeah. Let's see how that, yeah, that's better. It just seems awful, awful I can, low. I can, I can barely hear, hear it. I can hear you. Can well, you? See, I can't hear you. I, there's nothing coming out of mine. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, we can't. Yeah, That's getting a little better, Bill. Thank you. Sorry, having a little technical difficulties here. Well, yes, that's that's a little better. I, I don't know if I can hear Mike. I can. I can't hear anybody. Um, anyway, so we do have the JV, the JV team in. We got um, number six, Tom Morgan, quarterbacking. So we got some new. So we're trying to get as many of these kids in with the numbers. I got Morgan quarterbacking, Steve. You got who's in the backfield? Twenty-one. Let's start calling some of these kids. Um, 21 is uh, Michael Nice run. Atskin. Nice run by Thomas Morgan. Nice turn up yeah. field. Good up front blocking. This is so important, Mike, for these young fellas to get in the game, get some varsity experience. Yeah. And uh, you never know when some when a, when a starting player is going to go down. No, no and, question. Uh, uh, I know that Coach Stank, uh, find, you know, he, he sees how important, he knows uh, yeah. better than anybody how important this is. Morgan's a junior, looks like. Yeah, yeah this is, uh, this is, uh, this is something, I'll tell you. that, that they're, uh, Bedford, I mean, when you look at the quality of the athlete that's going in as a second backup player for Bedford, it's just so impressive. You know and, what I mean? And, and I haven't seen if Portsmouth has subbed out their varsity guys yet. And if they're still in there, then the JV team just put a touchdown. And uh, yeah, on, I so. think that uh, there's a lot of JV guys on Portsmouth I as hope well. So. Yeah, I think they put they both put their twos and threes in. I think that. Uh, thank you uh, for the uh, technical support there. Starting to get a little better now. I don't know if the, what was up with the headsets, I, but I can't hear anybody in mine. But we they fixed can hear it. Me. I'm definitely getting better, and I appreciate it, Bill. A little easier now. Mine. Yep. My headset is completely dead, but I can hear you guys, and that's all that matters. Yep. And so, um, be interesting to see. Uh, you know, I think it's great that Connor comes out of the game. You don't want to take any chances there, oh, Mike. Absolutely. You know, get him out. and uh, you know, as the game goes progresses. Uh, you know, everybody gets tired, and you just that's when injuries happen, and uh, it's good to get some fresh guys in there. And it is 59 to 13, so it's time to get the kids in. That's what I mean. Right, uh, yeah. I don't know. Oh, thank you very much. Wow, something really? just happened. Woo. Chris, Chris. Hi, everybody. Chris Gentry with the save. I finally can hear somebody. Chris is, Chris is a multitasker. Game. Not only could be an uh, he could be an offensive guard for us without the, any doubt. The whole game. As well as a technical guy that can help out in the that department game, as well. I couldn't hear any of you guys. And You're Chris, the man. Chris Gentry comes up with 5.40 to go in the third quarter, up 59-13. I can finally hear. All right. This feels good. <laughs> Kick is off. And, uh, again, good coverage by Bedford. Great job. Uh, wants to hold on to that tackle, but uh, great effort going down. You know, I mean, the special teams, Mike, uh, uh, it's just, this is an area that I, I have not seen any team, I you know, a lot I've got to see this year still, but I haven't seen the teams that, was, that, that we've, that I, I did last week, or in this game with Portsmouth, that could even compare to the spe quality of the special teams at Bedford. And I think when you start playing an equal opponent, as we talked earlier, that's just such an important part. Uh, of the game today in, in high school football. It's where, it's where accidents happen. Couldn't agree more. We do have a new quarterback. Yeah, in he's having some trouble. I think the refs seven. are going to give him some latitude, which is great. I think that's number 14 or 24. It looks like it is 14. Yeah, it's just great containment by Bedford. Swarming defense and uh, just a terrific job. Uh, with Bedford uh, team tackling right there. That's Jack Russo. Yeah, looks like number 70 checked into the game on uh, defensive line for Bedford. 
Um, I don't see a number 70. I don't know who that is on the on the sheet here. Do you have one, Mike? I have the same sheet as you. Just like to give these kids a uh, holler out that they're in the game and helping this Bedford Bull Bulldog team. Uh, yeah. So on the line now, Steve, 70, 71, 79. Yeah, I got uh, 70. I don't have any of those numbers unless they're down below. 70, 71. I don't, I'm sorry, folks. I just don't have the uh, the names with them, but they're in there doing a great job in the backfield of uh, Portsmouth. The, uh, you know, some players that have come out, the starters come out the field. I think Connor had a solid night tonight. Uh, threw into some, some coverage there a little bit, but other than that, just a stellar performance. Um, Dimitri and, and, and Agnos on both sides of the ball just did a terrific job tonight. Great two-way two player, Dimitri. Yep. Yeah, Ross can, can play. I this think game. Andrew Twite and uh, uh, Christian uh, Bourgeois uh, are just uh, well, just did a terrific job tonight on defensive Grant, end. Grant Colmer, Collins, Gallimard. Uh, they, um, they've done a terrific job. Terrific job. Nothing has gone up the middle. Uh, Colmer's played. <coughs> intercepted. Intercepted. Yeah. Great job. Who intercepted it? Anybody got a got a number there? Toscano. Yep. Yeah. Toscano in there playing a little D with a nice pickoff. Looks like a look a very solid athlete. Toscano as well uh, plays all out every single you know plays puts in 100 percent every single play. No rain tonight. We're the, the rumor has it in the forecast there might be a little bit of a downpour and then you know that it would go over quickly. But never saw any of that tonight. We had a ton last Beautiful night. crisp cool air coming in. <laughs> we certainly hope you people appreciate the. So Morgan, uh, Morgan, yeah. Handoff, handoff to 21. 21 is Michael. Uh, looks like Axton. Yeah. Hope I said that right. I think you did. So two to the left, two to the right. Morgan in the backfield with Askin. Man in motion. Handoff, man of motion coming this way. That's number 29. We're going to get a name on him. Got 29, Steve. What do we got? We got 29 is. I don't have that either. Well, he's going deep in the lineup, uh, Mike, uh, which is great. Uh, they're getting these kids some experience. Two minutes to go in the third quarter. For those of you who are watching on TV, uh, uh, the graphics that you're seeing on the TV tonight are something that uh, BCTV and Bill Jennings have added uh, to our programming. Uh, as well as Chris well, Jenkin yeah. Gentry no. is Chris uh, Gentry. Don't give Jenny terrific. credit for that. He's a camera guy and, and he runs the show. The guy that really does the work in that station is Gentry. Yeah, he's but doing a great job. But Chris doesn't need that moral support. Bill does, so I like to give it to him. <laughs> you know how it is. That's very true. Yeah. You know, hey, we don't you ever forget it, Steve. Somebody hurt. I hope it's nothing serious. He looks no. like he's down. Boy, he's, he's, and he's, yeah, he's, he's holding his head. I hate you. Hate to, oh, he's getting back up. He's, getting up. he's rolling over. Bill's got a hold of my neck, but he loves me, so he won't follow through on it. Bill and I go way back. Had some great times together with doing some political uh, shows, some sports shows, and um, it's just what what uh, a community is all about. It's just great how local television and radio are able to come together and do so much for the community and provide access to local events, which gosh knows today that. Uh, you don't see on cable TV uh, as a rule. So this is a, a place where people can be part of their local community. And for those out there who are interested in volunteering, contact Bill Jennings and, uh, and uh, any of the staff there, Colleen. Colleen Richardson. Yeah, Richardson, uh, that if you're interested in uh, helping out, volunteering, learning how to run a camera, whatever, they're always here to help with some professional advice. Radio as well. Um, Harry Kozlowski on the radio side doing a great job. Yep, nice kick there for... Uh, Nice job. They're going to bring it right down. Boy. Uh, can't get much deeper in the in the territory than that, uh, Mike. That's uh, down for those listening on radio. Harry Kozlowski puts a lot of effort into developing the radio broadcast for those people that are out on the road, com coming to and from work, um, tuning in uh, uh, the live streaming, which is really putting all three pieces of the puzzle together to be able to provide you, no matter where you are, the opportunity to tune in. And then go into the program schedule on BCTV and uh, go online. Look at the program schedule online. There's uh, there's uh, programs that are streaming live, all you know, pretty much all the time, and archive programming that you can go back and research and view. And um, 
just a just a great thing to have. So tune in and or click in to the uh, website. Got a little timeout going on here. I think it's a that's a quarter. Sorry, that's a, it goes quick when you have a um, a uh, running clock. So, um, but getting back to this coverage, you know, we're, we're hoping. If you, if you have some comments or it's it's helping you enjoy the game, please contact Bill. Let us know here at BCTV because we like to know if things are important to you, things that make a difference, and uh, ideas that you may have about in future budgets and future years of improving the broadcast because he certainly uh, you know, and, and the staff at BCTV are doing everything they can to, to bring it up to where you, you can dial any, I mean, you can put on any TV station on uh, sports and trying to bring it into, as close to that level as possibly can. And that's why we bring in the heavy hitters like Mike Robinson to, to do play-by-play -play and why I'm sitting here hoping that Mike's going to come back soon as I try to fill time and enjoy a beautiful, cool evening with you, post, you folks on TV, on live stream, and uh, on radio. The call station, uh, the, the number is 90, 97... 105.1 uh, Bedford uh, Radio. Um, Harry Harry Kozlowski is shaking his head, so I must have done something wrong. You got some stats? I don't think my thing goes that long, Harry. If you can have somebody hand it down, I appreciate it. So as the third quarter ends, let's go re review some stats here. Thank you, Harry. Harry Kozlowski uh, taking uh, Connor Robert after the third quarter, 7 for 15, 90 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. Um, Graham, uh, 13 for 26, 179 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Uh, Bedford total offense after the third quarter, 428 yards of, uh, Bedford, for Bedford and 161 for uh, Portsmouth. Bedford rushing total, 230, minus 16. That was as of the second quarter. I don't think that's changed much. And um, that's all for now. As we go back to the beginning of the fourth quarter when we were in running time uh, with Bedford leading 59-13 to 13 with the uh, backup players or the number twos and threes coming in and getting some valuable uh, experience uh, with the two coaches putting them in. Looks like they may get them behind the that's line. That's a tremendous a rush by Buff. That looks like a safety. It is a safety. So... Um, Bedford, uh, I don't want to call it JV because I think there's some varsity players mixed in there as well. So this uh, group of uh, players are coming in doing a fine job for Bedford. So obviously nothing changes uh, as you go deeper in the Bedford lineup versus Portsmouth. It just seems to get stronger as you go. So um, greatly attributed to the youth programs and um, uh, all of the work that uh, the parents and volunteers do in the community to, to provide Coach Dank with players uh, to come up that are interested, motivated, good, become good students and good athletes uh, that he can refine into the player to, uh, and the roles that he wants them to play. And I would say that all cylinders, Mike, are going here as far as uh, well, how Coach Dank is taking the players no that he question. receives and maximizing their output. And we, when I talked to Coach Dank in the uh, preseason, we talked about the numbers being down, but the quality is up. Yeah, yeah. And it's such a good point to, uh, to, to raise because the numbers are down is... 20 kids coming up from the freshman program, and, um, and when you got low numbers and high quality, then then all you have is nothing but great opportunities for kids to play football. And he's proven it here in Bedford that these kids are um, ready. So to two play apologies, at, at I was every level. I was picking uh, the popcorn that Bill Jennings bought me, and he didn't even tell me that the TV camera was on. So pardon me, folks. He does that. Yeah, he does that. He sneaks it in there. Yeah, but you're right, Mike. It's uh, it's such an important part, um, and. Um, I really like the role playing that these players do. This, this, you know, these guys are well disciplined. Yeah, some good athletes. Clearly, there's some good athletes coming up. Um, good weight program starts, and my understanding is in January. Um, uh, I believe there's been a significant expansion of the size of the weight room, and the scope yeah. of the equipment that in there, the technology that they have in there. And uh, that was uh, uh, done by Bedford Friends of Recreation. Um, worked so hard at developing uh, private private donations that go that they harbor in the Bedford Friends and work in conjunction with the various groups to make sure they get the things that they really need uh, that to, to advance these student athletes' capabilities. So thank you so much for the Bedford Friends of Recreation. 
while we're watching the game, just want to call out one other thing while we're talking about the BFOR. That's the Bedford Friends of Recreation. They are raising money at the games and looking to build um, extended bleachers. Yep. A lot of people uh, involved in Bedford Recreation, certainly in a future broadcast, we'll, get, we'll refine that a little bit more, get some names out. I think Bill had mentioned Dick Antignos, Bill Greiner, as well as a uh, host of other people that work extremely hard through leadership all the way down to rank and file positions as far as putting in the time and effort to uh, advance and um, expand and make the uh, athletic experience for these student athletes uh, the best it can be. So thank you, BFOR. And if you'd like to donate, just uh, just go online, Bedford Friends of Recreation. I'm sure they have a, a site that you can go on and make contact with those people. Um, if not, we'll provide that for you next broadcast. Um, tell us about what they were collecting money for um, pregame. My understanding is uh, they are collecting money to expand the bleaches. We cannot build across the way there, apparently because of wetlands or costs that would in order to be able to provide uh, bleaches over there. That was a part of a original plan, but I guess isn't going to be um, capable of doing so. As a result of that, they're going to be expanding the bleachers down. I believe adding to the press box. Correct me if I'm wrong, Bill. I think they want to add to the press box as well. No. On either side down to the 10-yard line, right? And have locker rooms where the kids can go to. Uh, yep. Yeah, oh, which okay. is, that's which is good, just, that's a good idea. just a great idea and a, a worthy goal. And um, so important in order to try to you know, make this the 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 uh, facilities the best they can be. At the same time, not hitting the taxpayers and deferring some of that cost, uh, if or all if possible. Uh, and that's just such an that volunteerism benefits such an important part of doing that. Yeah, I said that they're working with the schools, working with the, whatever they do. They work with the. Uh, with the town and and and, uh, and educational uh, institution here in Bedford to find out what that what they need and then they go to work trying to raise the money. So, so we have a field goal attempt here, and this is uh, Aiello again. Looks like and uh, that's a good looking kick. His kick and he, nope, a little left. Just a little left. I believe it. Ha it's no, good. it's good. Boy, it I thought I start went left. That's that's fantastic. So that was from the. 34, that was a 42 or 3. 42, yard. and that's yeah. right. So that's about the, what I saw on his leg yeah. there early. It was yeah. 42, haha, <laughs> 43 yards. And uh, although I must say, I don't think he got all of that. I actually think he can kick longer than that. I really There's do. No question. We thought he missed it. We thought he got it uh, a little low, but he stepped up and he uh, booted that one through. And again, he's talking about a guy. So here's a, here's a coach, got a team up. He's up 64 13 or 61 13 at the time. He says, let's practice our kicking game. Yep. That, and coach, that tells you about the dedication that Coach Stank has at, at yep. all phases of this So game. let's think about that now. I think Stank, Coach Stank is pretty confident that if he can get the ball down to the 30, 32-yard line, he's going to go for it in a, in a tight situation in a game. I, I would argue that most, most teams need to get down to the 15-yard line, somewhere in that range, to maybe 20 max uh, it, with, with most programs to even take a shot at a field goal. This is a real advantage that he has. And um, you know, you get into two minute, two minute warning situations. It's a big factor. You know, we talked about the schedule coming up, Steve, and you said we got two away games. And, I believe and, so. Yeah. And, and I think you're right because as I look at it, next week I believe we're in Winnicott. And then Concord, right? And then no, um, Spalding. Spalding. Yeah. Right. So right. Okay. Spalding on the 22nd. Yeah. When, um, and uh, let me see here. And then after that, we're going to have um, Exeter here. Yeah. Circle that on your calendar. Absolutely. September 30th. Looking forward to it. It's a, it's a it. Saturday. It's going to be at, um, looks like it's going to be at 6 o'clock. And we have our real first test following the, that game on the 7th. we got Goffstown. That will be a test. Following that one on the 10th of October, uh, excuse me, the next one's going to be on the 14th of October at Concord, up at the uh, Crimson Tide of Concord. So, and then on the 19th, Central comes into town. 21st, we have Dover, excuse me, 27th Central. So there's some there's some talent coming down the yep. road. Yeah. But when somebody picks up the paper tomorrow morning and sees the final score, 60 something to 13 or so, what does the rest of Division One say about Bedford at this point? Well, I mean, they, they did it the right way. 
And uh, oh, a little miscue down there. Looks like he was down, then he got up and kept running. Ref's got to be all over that with making sure the whistle's clear. Flag thrown on that. We'll see what the uh, call is. Um, if they call that on Bedford, I'll really be surprised because all he was doing was trying to react to the player digging for yardage, and I didn't hear. Oh, it's a um, procedure procedure call against uh, Portsmouth, so it wasn't a personal foul after all. Uh, you asked a question, Mike, about... Um, when you pick up the paper tomorrow morning and people start reading of this lops, lopsided score, it was Memorial last week, which people probably thought it was going to happen. This one's another blowout, a bigger blowout against a gutsy Portsmouth team. Well, I, I'll be honest with you. I want to see Portsmouth Memorial because I would argue that Portsmouth, uh, to me, last week showed a lot of fight, and I and they had a, uh, they seemed to improve throughout the game and just didn't give up. I'm not saying that Portsmouth is, but I think that'll be a closer contest than some might think. Um, as far as how people would feel about Bedford, just more of the same, uh, continued improvement every week. So. Um, if Coach Dan can begin to refine this team and continue to correct mistakes, another flag thrown. Yeah. Um, so procedure. apologize, f folks, but I got a glare through this glass. It's very difficult to see if a flag is thrown. So well, we're gonna try and but get. But we had uh, we got uh, our helpers here letting us know. So well, Chris Gentry is so on the ball. Without yeah. Chris, would be lost here, and and the help from from Harry Kozlowski with what all is the it? stats. False start against. That's two false starts. Very common when you bring in a secondary offense, Mike, where they're going to run into some procedure uh, calls uh, where they don't get a lot of playing time. But I would say that, to answer your question, Bedford every single week, uh, if they can continue to improve, uh, you know, it, it's, it's good. they're going to be a real hard program to beat. Um, every one of these kids uh, that I've seen out there, every one of the Bedford kids, they know how to tackle. If you look at that out there right there, what you saw right there, that was excellent form tackling. And uh, these kids are ready to play. That uh, looks like a player roughed up. The, the, the runner was uh, pretty roughed up with that. So Now the Portsmouth player down. Oops. One every quarter, yeah. Who? Number seven for... Uh, so like I said... Uh, one of the things, as at the end of the third quarter, just want to get passing. Uh, Noah Schabrick, four passes for 51 yards, two touchdowns. Robert, just want to call this, seven rushes for 144 yards, two touchdowns. Amazing. Uh, just amazing, uh, both of these guys. So many weapons on Bedford uh, to attack with an offensive line that just got it done tonight, Mike. I mean, they, they were stellar tonight. Uh, I don't. I don't recall a holding penalty against Bedford. Did you? I didn't see a holding penalty. So I only saw Robert being rushed once. Runs, yeah. Under pressure. Just I a terrific job by the offensive line uh, on the field. Uh, we you saw, know, we starting saw. group. Nolan. I mean, uh, Ben Lacombe, uh, Gavin Grant, uh, Zach Colmer, Collins, and Galmaga. Just a terrific uh, job uh, from tackle to tackle. They are terrific work, and. Um, they are the unsung heroes of the team. When those guys create the kind of holes and openings that they have um, consistently had, um, it makes it uh, a full court press effort. So we just handled it. Nice an, job. An, an interesting uh, note on the penalties that Bedford had. Five yard for face masks, block in the back, 10 yards, false start five, offsides five, hit to the head 15. And the hit to the head was a non-intentional. That was a I, situational hit to the I, head. I agree. That, that, I mean, not much he could yeah. have done, but you have to make the call. Yeah, they got to make the call. Um, Portsmouth's so. had a holding call, a false start, a delay, a false start. So they're all over the board. But, but um, we were talking last week, Mike, about Bedford improving. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, why, with Bedford improving um, those holding calls from last week, clearly they've done that. Um, and that's the sort of, uh, like I said, get better every week and make improvements and, and refine your craft as you – as a new opponent comes into Bedford or beyond oh, every we week. We didn't have a lot of those hot-headed calls where you got the personal foul that we talked about the linemen in the trenches and I think Memorial and line, D-line and our O-line got a little chippy on there and so a couple of those flags. Really like liked the way Coach Dang handled that last week because that was just an aggression thing where there was nothing dirty or anything like that. It was two guys going at it and it turned into a SWAT. Referees did their yeah. job, comes to the sidelines. Coach Dang takes them aside and says, look, you, it's pretty obvious what he said. I love the, the, the heart, but you've got to learn how to control it. And, uh, and you see the reflection of these players have responded this week in a big way. So, No question. 64-13, 4.22 to go with the clock. 
kicking in the fourth quarter, and it's like the JV program. Nice job. Fast. That was on the ground, I think, already. Number 11 uh, from Bedford, uh, uh, Timothy Green. What a great job coming up field and making a nice form tackle there. 4.04 left in the fourth quarter. Uh, 64 to 13. Bedford's up comfortably up in front. We have running time. So that 356 is uh, about all there's. D D Mike and I have. Mike, question for you. Going next week, what are your thoughts for next week with your opponent? Um, more of a running style, um, kind of come right at you uh, type offense. Well, what do you think? It's a way, first away game for that test fumble out there. First, first um, I away game. I, I go back to Winnicott. I don't have a lot of great memories out there. We lost a couple of. I know we lost a championship game out That's there. That's a tough loss. There, we yeah. lost a couple of close ones to Winnicott. You know, and, and, and they were kind of like, you know, kind of cocky. You know, they had a good program. We didn't have a good program. So I wouldn't be surprised, not that it's payback time, but if Bedford keeps playing like this, that they're going to put another lopsided score up. Well, out in Winnicott. To your point, uh, you know, Coach Derek Stank is not a new coach. He's been with the program longer Since than the beginning. longer than any yeah. other coach yeah. that have come and left, yeah. stayed, whatever. Yeah. Derek Stank's been a, a, a really refined uh, and been the huge part of the Bedford defense that for so many years has been so solid. So nice pass there. And and again, I don't think that's going to win. That's the score. That's going to stop the clock. There's a score for Portsmouth as a nice pass and uh, was able to get around the corner and uh, go into the end zone. That'll uh, tighten up the score just a little bit, but the clock will still run, Mike. But I agree well, with you, but I think Derek has a long memory about that game. Yeah, and, but, uh, but again, you know, I don't think he's a vindictive guy. No, but no, no, he but he's a competitor. He operates his craft in, and like Bill Belichick will say, you know, because one time they asked him, you know, why'd you run the score up? And he said, this is big boy football. Yeah. You know, this isn't, you know, yeah. just patty cake here. We're playing football. We play until the whistle blows, and we play hard. And yeah. I think that's the same mental mentality that I think Coach most Stank of it is has. the fact he's going to he's going to really prepare for that game because Winnicott has been a solid program for years. Yeah, they were part of, always part of one of those strong Division two programs that all that have really kind of reculminated into this larger Division one program. Um, There's so always a good fan base out there. There is. It's there Bedford's is. first away there game, is. so yeah. and they, those kids hit. Winnicott hits. They bring it. And they got a statement to make, mm -hmm. so. Um, and they're home, we're away. Yeah. Real grass, and all that goes along with real, that. Real grass, yeah. Yep. So 241. Um, so the clock's to gonna go kick once they. Um, 64 to 20 now. Yeah, 64 to 20. It's that's a, that's some big numbers right there. Yeah. Uh, I think. I think Bill was ready to go home about an hour ago. I'm not sure. I, I, if he was, and I was. <laughs> he was. <yeah>. Well, <laughs> I, I'm your ride, so you kind of have to yeah, hang right. tight unless <laughs> unless the volleyball game over, gets over and you right. have a car. The, the, the girls. Fill the air with so much debt. <laughs> the, girls, the girls did win their first match, so congratulations to the Bedford girls volleyball team beating Nashua North in, yeah. in four games. So yeah. congratulations to them. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, it's uh, – it's good. It's good when Bedford teams win, and, and we're gonna have a good night tonight with the volleyball and the football teams winning. Ah, that volleyball team. How's that game? It's it's over. I told you they over. They won. They won. So needless to thanks say, the for the reports, right? The uh, huh? yes, yeah, man. Thanks for MB for the reports yeah. on the scene. Robinson House will be a happy place. Yeah, and it's a Friday night, so you can stay up late. Michael fall asleep in his chair. Yeah, his, you're right about that. <laughs> in his recliner. In about, in about 45 <laughs> minutes. It's 9.30. By 10.15, I'll be sound asleep. There you go. Well, when you get in your 50s, Mike, I agree. Nappy time is uh, comes. Hey, it's hey, all part of it, hey, man. listen, I heard today JFK took a nap every day. Yeah, and look what it did for him. And look what it did for him. Yep. He was a vibrant guy and yep. president yep. and... Uh, and he needed and he needed his rest. He still had that war injury. Remember, he hurt his back in that PT. Uh, he had Addison's PT, disease as well. And he had Addison's disease, yeah. so yeah. he wore a back brace. The guy was in a it's lot a of pain. A very uncomfortable man. Yeah, uh, it is. Yeah, yeah. But you know, tip you had to uh, yeah. Jack Kennedy and yeah. what he did. Yeah. Another war hero. Yep. Yeah. And George Herbert Walker Bush, another war hero. Oh, great yeah. story. Great yeah. story about Bush yeah. Senior. Yep. Yeah. Bill's told us to get off politics. Stay, stay focused on the game. Well, listen, we're just trying to we're just trying to provide some history to our, right. our listeners, and 
Well, no. you know, I, I think what we need to do is if this is going to be a regular occurrence, we really need the numbers of, of these players so we can announce who they are. I, yeah. I, they're all, they're not on the chart here, so, which is great for these kids, and, and believe me, we'd love to, na to name these kids and let the folks know that kids are in the game and they're doing well, but I can't guess, you know what I mean? So, we all can, right. We can only go with what we have, Steve. Yep. All right, play, I'll just call player number 11 and player number 29. And, and, Trips left here. And if that's your kid. Yeah, it's a big deal. But these kids are, these kids are doing great. And I, I think Coach Dank is deep into the Bedford lineup, which is fantastic for these kids to get in. Big, yeah, a little aggressive uh, D uh, for Portsmouth there. Yeah, but these are JV kids playing JV kids. So it's, yeah. really, it's really bragging yeah. rights at this point. Sure it is. Sure it is. You know, it's, it's not scrub time if you're a JV player playing on the. You're out there trying to show your name and, you and bet. show the coach what you can do. So these yep. kids are hard. They're playing hard. That was good defensive uh, speed there by Portsmouth. We used to call it scrub time because that's when I played. Yeah, I don't call it scrub time. Gee whiz. Well, I'm going back now. I'm dating myself. Yeah, Mike's going back to 1950s football. <laughs> yeah. Not that much. Yeah. Eddie Kissel. We're Eddie, close. if you're out there listening, Eddie, you're the man. I'd love you. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, final knee. Bedford just took the final knee, so that's going to so bring us into the seconds. final score here in Bedford Bulldog Stadium. 64 to 20 is going to be the final score. I think Harry's got some final stats for us coming up. We'll read them. We'll talk about what's coming up, and then we'll uh, sign this thing off. But sure. But uh, overall, fantastic performance for Connor Robert and the boys on offense, and of course the Bedford defense um, only let up 13 points. In fast, the team. fast yeah. to the ball. Yeah. Uh, very team-oriented defense. Um, every guy wanted wanted to to get in on a tackle as opposed to avoid it. Uh, very good. I think I think it's going to be interesting to see where Port, how Portsmouth responds so that they're, with their team this upcoming weeks against opponents, but they were no match for Bedford uh, this evening at all. No question about that. I totally agree. No match. Uh, Band playing a happy song out there, doing a great job. Halftime show was outstanding. And, uh, you know, they're, they're cutting uh, instrumentals in between the plays, which just makes it, adds color to the game and, and we, really we, enjoyable. So thank you we, to the Bedford High School yeah, Band we, as well. Yeah, we want to thank um, BCTV and 105.1 WBNH Radio for providing us um, the opportunity to broadcast here and, and give you guys in the behind the scenes, Harry Kozlowski on the radio side, Chris Gentry doing all the technical stuff, Bill Jennings on the camera. Um, we're going to sign off here. My name's Mike Robinson. Thank you, Steve Beals, for us doing another great job tonight. My pleasure, Mike. And we look forward to seeing you guys in the next match. We're going to sign off here from Bedford with the final score, 64-20 Bedford Bulldogs over the Clippers from Portsmouth. Thanks for listening, folks.